Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special episode of the Council Force cast. We're not going to be using counting in amongst our usual uh, numbering today because we didn't have Antoine, and it's kind of a off the cuff episode. Um, but it's regarding a very specific topic that I'm sure many people will be interested in: Darth Sidious or Emperor Palpatine, whichever you'd prefer. Uh, obviously, it's me, Reti Four, Evan Nova. Hello. And Jen Sarai. What's up? Uh, so yes, this is a particularly interesting one. Let's get started. Yes, just to give a little bit of backstory, uh, the idea for this video was actually inspired by a comment chain that I got involved in in my uh, Star Killer vs. La Auk Skywalker video, which I will link in the description. You could go uh, find it for yourself. But basically, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of Darth Sidious as he is as a fighter, because you know for the longest time now, every a lot of fans seem to think that you know Darth Sidious is this invincible force god of the dark side when he's not. He, not he is not, like, let's just get, get that out of the way. Darth Sidious is not invincible. He's never been invincible, nor will he ever be invincible. And he is massively overestimated. Yes, yeah. by a great majority of the fan base. So what we're doing here, and this is another thing too, this is not intended to be an attack on those who got involved in that comment chain with me. In fact, I actually want to say thank you to those people because, you know, you guys inspired, you know, me to get this together. So thank you for giving your opinions. This is not meant to be antagonistic. This is just, you know, you guys brought a topic to light that I thought, hey, this would make for a cool video. So here we are. So discuss, uh, basically, discuss, discuss. Yes, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through all of Palpatine's attributes and explain, you know, what's good about them, what's not good about them, and hopefully by the end of it you guys will get a more grounded opinion of everyone's favorite emperor because, like Callan said, he is massively overestimated. So yes. Understandably yes. so in certain ways. I mean, yes, he is extremely powerful, but that's the thing. He's extremely powerful. He's powerful. not the greatest fighter in all of, of time and space, which is what people most most routinely associate him with, and that's where we take issue. Yes, it's so. kind of the it's kind of the same it's kind of the sort of paradoxical thing that happens with a lot of the great masters of the Force throughout the Star Wars universe. The more powerful they are, the less skilled and tactically calculating they are, because they're just able to lean on that overwhelming power to get them through any and all situations so they don't need to build up their skills they don't need to approach combat intelligently because they can just bulldoze through all of their enemies because they're so powerful they're untouchable and on top yes. of that now. it's so often the case that they are so powerful because of their personalities or characteristics tied mm -hmm. with their fortune in the force i mean yoda extremely powerful but doesn't like combat he's a teacher at heart so he doesn't have a particular interest to drive him towards perfecting his combat you know sidious egotistical maniac that has absolutely no interest in uh, personal combat. He likes to manipulate people to death. You know, mm -hmm. The characters... It's not that these guys couldn't be the absolute best of the best in terms of combat, it's just they have no interest in it and their characters really don't fit that. Mm -hmm. um, which is another point of contention we have with Sidious, because... Yes. He's not so, a warrior. Why does no, he's, he's not. He's, he's not a warrior. He's, he's absolutely not. He's absolutely every Absolutely everything that Paul Petitin does is an egotistical exercise. Yes, he is an advanced lightsaber master, but the only reason why he attained that level of skill was specifically so he could, you know, one-up the Jedi and show off his powers. He's not entering into combat wanting a challenge in a lightsaber duel. He's entering into combat wanting to, you know, showboat. He wants to exactly. show off. He wants to demonstrate his superiority. And the thing is, it's kind of a consistent feat that every single time he comes up against someone who's actually capable of standing against him in lightsaber combat... He basically just drops his lightsaber and switches over to force abilities. Like that was basically how his the duel with Yoda went. Yes, and we will get more into that when we analyze lightsaber skills. But for now, I say we start off with Palpatine's, you know, because it's easiest to get out of the way. Let's start off with Palpatine's physicality. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, let's okay, start guys, off with uh, his physicality. Palpatine is a freaking old man. <laughs> who is severely rotting on the inside from the dark side. His physicality is negligible. He doesn't have physicality. He's a walking corpse with testicle forehead. It's just... He's he is just a, no, there's nothing. He's a scrawny little fucker. That's what he is. I mean, he walks yes. around like this, like as the norm. I mean... He has a cane before, in, in episode you know, six. Before, the Mac yes. Mace Window incident as well. Just, <laughs> this guy yeah, is not he, someone that po poses a physical threat. No, to yeah. anybody. 
to anybody. Old Ben Kenobi is arguably in better physical shape than Palpatine. And <laughs> while the Force obviously counteracts that in almost entirely, um, it's still a relevant point because people, again, just dis disregard it. It's like, oh, it's nothing. The Force ability makes up for it. Which, yes, it does in large part, but it's still a significant factor, particularly as we most particularly speaking about today, against people that have no such disadvantage and the same level of power or similar level of power. It, mm -hmm. It's a huge deal. I mean, yeah, Bane, and the thing is, how many times has he yeah. mentioned the dark side being crippling um, in its nature? And and he was like 40. All the God... Yeah. And the other thing is, is the fact that because Palpatine is so, well, so physically frail, his ability to to channel the power of the dark side and use it to amp his physical performance is itself kind of held back by this. Like, obviously not when he's in his original body before his death and Return of the Jedi. But in Dark Empire, this was actually made a significant issue. In the third story arc, Empire's End, it's like every single time the Palpatine clone used his Force abilities, you know, it was like Shinzon in Star Trek Nemesis. His body was withering away every single time. It's like he had to be—he had to use his powers very sparingly because if he just kind of went him. crazy, yeah. And it's like obviously not quite as much of a problem before when he was in his original, you know, human body before be become being that. But it's still something to be considered. There's only so far he can go before he just drops dead because his body can't handle it. And again, let's not forget that he was was in his perfectly normal, healthy body when he became corpse face because you know. That the lightning wasn't bouncing back and frying his face exclusively. A lot of that damage is just from dark side degradation like that because he's using so much power. Mm -hmm. it, he was draining himself to the point of death in that fight. He is a physical lightweight. I mean, look at the look at the what happened in Revenge of the Sith. Mace Windu kicked him in the chest once, and he went flying and dropped his lightsaber. I think this is a guy who cannot physically compete with anybody. The only reason he gets by is because he you know he bolsters his muscles through the through the force. Take that away, and he's a, he's an old man who you could just push over, and be, he'd break his head. And because and because of that, combatively speaking, Palpatine is a glass cannon. It's like, it's like yeah, he's really difficult to get a beat on because he's so fast and so powerful. But the moment you're you actually get a chance to crack this guy in the jaw, he's down. All and you need all is one is good it. strike, and you're golden. I mean, the the instance where Mace kicks him may have been him throwing the fight Purposely, in fact it was yeah. him throwing the fight but it does it still doesn't change the fact that if he wasn't that would have had, had the same effect you know he's that physically weak and again mm -hmm. it's not a slight against him i'm saying oh god it's so weak you know people are saying it's so powerful no it's just it's just a fact physically he's yeah weak. same way yoda is only obviously not immediate yeah yeah it's like that's just kind of what the dark side does to you and the thing is there are a lot of great sith lords who are still able to be you know nigh unstoppable combative dervishes despite being so physically drained and weakened it's like you know and vitiate darth bane, mar malgus king Ma bane yeah. malgus freaking freaking darth nihilus has no phys physical form <laughs> he's literally just armor and a mask yeah it's like king omen you know king omen it's like i'm under the impression that what happened with omen is he got hit by severe osteoporosis because of his dark side degradation to the point where he needed a mechanical exoskeleton to prevent him from just collapsing into a pile of jelly on the ground Pretty that's much. how badly he got hit by the dark side degradation but he was still a ludicrously powerful sith sorcerer exactly yeah, so bottom line, Palpatine is not going to be physically overpowering anybody. Palpatine's never going to win in a combative scenario by physical force. It's just not going to happen. And, and um, hell, I mean, uh, Connor, you were mentioning a couple days ago in the ROTC uh, novelization how Palpatine remarks, I haven't run since I was a boy on Naboo. And it's like, <laughs> that, that just yeah, proves how like, lacking his physical there, capabilities are. Yeah. Obviously, that particular, like, just to address that particular line, yes, that line could have just been a quick little off-handed thing he said to Anakin to kind of not cue him into the fact that, you know, he's secretly a force god. But the thing is, towards the end of the novel, there's actually a, they actually make a point of mentioning a scene where Paul Patine runs. And this is made up as a big deal. It's like, it's just like he's described as running with a vigor that surprised even himself. And this is after his fight with Yoda, so he's already kind of pooped out because of that. And he frickin' ran. And it made a point of pointing out that he fucking ran. No assistance from the Force. He ran. And it was talked about, like, this is the first time that this guy has run in years. 
I mean, not counting the running between uh, the closing blast doors as he descended the steps to his bunker, <laughs> running from Grizzly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he can he can do it. He can scuttle, but uh, it's not something he you know, you know it's, he's going to be doing. He's combat. one of those. He, he's one of those guys who's he can he can move pretty fast when he wants to, but the thing is, how often does he want to? <laughs> no. And again, that's what so often cripples him. It's his want. Yep. Um, and... Everything about this guy revolves around want. It's mm -hmm. like going on a bit of a tangent. I was once sitting down thinking, okay, which of the various DC Comics lantern cores with various Star Wars characters fit into? And Palpatine is an orange lantern all the way. He is a lantern of greed. That's what his entire personality revolves around. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yep, he is. He is so, okay. Um, <laughs> any more remarks on physicality? Uh, not much, really. I mean, uh, really, there's I, not much to say. He's an old man. He's not going to be winning against anybody through physical force. It's all the force. Yeah. That's all it he's, is. He's fucking scrawny. He's puny. So, no, yeah. So, let's, let's talk move... about how the force completely negates that problem. Because, it well, does. no, well, sh shouldn't we? Yeah, we have to. Now we're going to get to the big one Sidious's martial arts skills. And, Callan, would you like to start us out on that one? Uh, martial arts skills? Should we not do the force first? Because that's what completely shapes well, his we? martial arts skills. You will, do you think we should, Connor? Save that. Save uh, that martial arts skills for last. Maybe we should yeah, do. It, this leads I, into it because it explains our opinion on the martial okay. arts skills, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Sidious. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So sorry about that, guys. We'll uh, do uh, force abilities now instead. Sidious right. is insanely powerful. Like something, you know, Sidious is commonly believed to be the most powerful dark sider in galactic history, and for all intents and purposes, he pretty much is. Agreed. That's undeniable. Yeah. Possesses it's... enormous power. No yeah, one can take of, that from him. All of his feats, especially in the expanded universe, this guy is basically an eldritch <laughs> abomination in human form. You know, that's... He's terrifying. He is. And that's not to be uh, over underestimated or overstated in any way. It's just a fact, you know, the most powerful dark side of all time. Mm -hmm. But just because he's the most powerful dark sider of all time doesn't mean there are people there are people who can't contend with him and yeah it's he's not the most powerful combatant of all time he really mm -hmm. isn't uh he's a sorcerer as connor said earlier um he's the sort of person that will be standing back and casting all manner of sorcerer spells you know lightning flying everywhere telekinesis telekinetic barrage it's him showboating um he uh, we'll, we'll talk about it more in martial arts, I guess, but his interest lies there because that's what it, it, it's, it's power. You know, he doesn't see lightsaber combat as something that can express that power because it's just oh, some silly Jedi thing no. they do the Sith. Uh, yes, uh, in, moved on in, um, years ago. Yeah. Uh, it, sorry. The Sith, uh, in, out, uh, the Sith <laughs> outgrew the use of lightsabers, but we continue to use them if only to humiliate the Jedi. Yeah. And that is a quote from Dark Lord: The Rise of Darth Vader. That is in canon, in universe, something he has said. Sidious views the Force as his primary means of, you know, expression, not yeah. not physical combat. Yeah, and that fits his character perfectly, which is why I don't understand such um, hatred from people that you, you criticize him as a duelist, and people are like, oh my god, what are you talking about? Bro? Like, Look, he fights Mace Windu, one of the greatest duelists of all time. It's like, yes, he does. That is not because of his dueling skill. That is because of his insane Force abilities. Um, mm -hmm. It's his speed. Uh, yes, it's the biggest point we're probably going to make in this video. That is that his force is what makes him so powerful. Yes. If you took away the force, he would be nothing at all. Yes, not just weak, but actually nothing. His dueling skills are pathetic. Is he laughable? Yeah. Like, it, like it is basically go that you take some of the great masters in galactic history: Mace Windu, Obi Wan Kenobi, even Anakin Skywalker. Strip them of their force abilities. These people would still be high-level martial artists and swordsmen. They would still be a formidable force to most people. Strip Sidious of his nah, strip Sidious of his force abilities, and like Callan said, he's nothing. He has nothing going for him. And that's not even to say he's Yoda. Not, even even Yoda. If you were to strip Yoda of his force abilities, no, he would not be able to fight anymore. He would not be able to apply lightsaber combat in combat anymore. But he would still be able to do the basic katas. Like you could, he could still do lightsaber combat as yoga in the park for an old person. But <laughs> he, he'd that. still be able. He'd he'd still have his skills. He'd still be able to do his lightsaber training. He just wouldn't be able to use it to actually fight. Palpatine, yes. not so much. He, and that's another thing some people don't understand. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, Callan. So I'll just quickly do this one first. Um, he yeah. has the uh, techniques and the card. He can do those carters, but whereas Yoda's pro he Yoda can't use them compatibly because of his physicality and age, Palpatine can't use them um, compatibly because he can't fight without the Force. It's what makes him so powerful. In it. Um, mm -hmm. his he is a a master of dueling, but that hasn't been the case uh, based on physicality alone for years. And we'll explain mm -hmm. why in a minute. But sorry, Evan, what were you saying? Something, yeah, that, uh, something I was just uh, wanting to mention is um, the whole force connection with Jedi martial arts. Some people th seem to think that, you know, you you could only apply Jedi martial arts if you have the force. You know, the force is where everything stems from. They think, you know, if you have the force, you could just do these martial arts. No, that's not how these things work. Martial arts and force abilities are two separate entities. Yes, the, having the force helps you excel in Jedi martial arts. But it's not a necessity. There are several cases where non-Force sensitives have practiced um, Jedi martial arts to effect. One of the best examples of this is someone like Ulic Keldroma. He was stripped of his Force abilities, was forced, and was forced to fight Silvar, a fully trained Jedi Knight with the Force, and he was able to contend, contend well, I might add. The like Force abilities and Jedi yep. martial arts are two separate entities. You Sorry, also have the Cest but you also have the novel The Cestus Deception, where Kit Fisto trains a bunch of clone commandos in basic Jedi flow exercises. Like their basic their absolute low level basic martial arts training, like before you even start studying Shi Cho, he was able to train these clones in the in these techniques, and the clones were able to use them in combat. Yes. The force is not where Jedi martial arts stem. They're just a companion piece to it, essentially. Yeah, essentially. It, you know, it, they go together. Yeah, it bolsters it. I mean, this isn't to say that it's two people of equal skill in martial arts, one with the Force, they are taking equally contend. They can't. But someone with less skill against someone with more skill with the Force isn't... It's it's the, it's a whole balancing act. It's not a case of, well, I have the... Uh, I'm better than you, um, but don't have the Force. I can't possibly fight you who worse than me, but do have the Force. It, that's not going to happen. Yes. That's a really if, poor description, if, but... Yeah, you get my point if... Um, if the Force is where Jedi martial arts were anchored, um, non-forceful beings couldn't use them. But the thing is, they can. And well. So, yes, quite well. So they're just yeah. martial arts techniques. Like in real life, they're things you learn. They're things that you practice. They're, they're things you, pr um, you know, perfect over a long period of training. It's like these aren't things that just come to you. It's not like, oh, I have the Force. I can automatically just you know, do Shi Cho or Naiman or Ataru. No, you have to learn these things over a long yeah. period of time. And the, force helps, and the thing is, but, you know, it's not and the thing is, lightsaber combat and Jedi martial arts are also something that a lot of Jedi and Sith lords study and specialize in hardcore to compensate for less power in the Force. It's like Kasim in Darth Bane: Path of Destruction says it explicitly: a superior swordsman can defeat someone who is more powerful in the Force. And then you got characters like Orgus Din, a low-level Force sensitive who doesn't have much actual power, but he puts hit everything in the lightsaber combat, becomes a battle master. And, mm -hmm. you know... Perfect example right there. Yeah. Can be done. Mm -hmm. And it is done. And it's it's something we need to hammer in as well. That is a, an important factor to consider because people say, well, it's not the real world. You know, these are like this <laughs> lightsabers and force. You know, that, you can't use real world logic and martial arts in this. But you can and you must because someone with... Um, Yes, it's it's very true that someone without the Force can't wield lightsabers effectively just from the nature of it, it being so dangerous. You need the Force to guide it to make it not more likely to kill you. But the point is, you need it to make it to take it to the highest level. You can still function with a lightsaber. People have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the people with the most powerful Force abilities are going to rely on it more heavily. It's just natural. It fits in with the character. It fits in the logic of the universe. It fits in with everything, which is why all of the logic we're going to use to sort of take Sidious down a notch in a minute is valid. You can't, it's not, you know, refutable. We're, we're not just making this up as we go. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's real like, world logic applies just, to it. Just to, just to state, it's real world logic with a grain of salt, because obviously there are a lot of aspects to Jedi martial arts, and a lot of the fighting styles of the characters featured in the films that some of the moves that they perform, like especially a lot of the twirls, the stage choreography stuff, a lot of that seems a little daft. But the thing is, a lot of that is just a quick little aesthetic detail. When you take the character's fighting style as a whole, it still holds up, it still makes sense. It's like Qui-Gon Jinn, one of my favorite lightsaber duelists. In episode one, he does a whole heck of a lot of twirls and spins because that's just kind of what the choreography was all about in that movie. But when you actually observe his attack patterns, his move sets, his approach to combat, it's like this is a fighting style that 
makes sense and is clearly practical. It's like, it, just ignore the stage choreography moves and just focus on the stuff that makes sense. The stuff that makes sense outweighs the stuff that doesn't. Yeah, and people, you could practice Jedi martial arts yourself. You could go get a lightsaber, look up the choreography of the seven forms, and do them. You can't do them like a Jedi, obviously, but you can do them. You can... It's like that's the thing that so many people forget. It's the fact that almost every single duel, except for the ones involving Yoda, are done by actual actors and stunt people who do not have power in the Force, just doing choreographed fighting routines in front of a camera. You know, mm -hmm. it's like this is supposed to be a representation of what the Jedi are like in combat, what their capabilities in combat are. And these representations are being provided by normal, regular people just like you or me. And mm -hmm. you mustn't forget as well that you can't take the visuals um, just on face value because, I mean, if you do that, Sidious and Mace both are some of the worst duos of all time uh, just because of the actors. Yeah, and just to, just to point out, Red, uh, Ready for People is a professional fencer, so he knows what he's talking about with these things. I'm technically not professional. I'm just not even an expert amateur. Uh, but You teach. <laughs> uh, yeah, but only amateurs. It's um, you, do ha you do have formal proper training yeah. and you do do it on a regular basis okay, so when yeah. you're talking about this you know what you're talking about okay it's yeah. like i'm i'm strictly informal but i do kind of i do have some idea of what you need to do to fence properly but still same here i practice myself yeah yeah well what i meant by amateurs is that i'm not all about uh, the techniques and stuff like that i just teach in terms of experience so i've been doing it for 10 years i know what works kind of thing not the the names of the forms, the techniques, the schools of thought, that kind of thing. You're um, using Bonetti's defense against me, huh? <laughs> yeah, precisely. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. what I don't do, um, which is somewhat an advantage to think of or New Jedi Order. Anyway, moving on. Um, my point was, uh, if I remember my point. Choreography face value. Yes, thank you. Uh, choreography, cho choreography can't be taken on face value because, one, it's being designed by people who want to entertain. Um, yes. Two, it's being played by restricted actors. Uh, and three, it doesn't necessarily, because of the people not understanding the characters themselves, match the characters. You can't take a single fight from a from someone um, and use that as a feat and say, well, that applies to them in general. Because if it doesn't fit the character, you have to mold around it and you have to try and make it work or, or even ignore it in some cases. If you see Darth Vader tomorrow in Rebels start using Yoda techniques, you can't then say, well, Darth Vader is someone who uses Yoda techniques all the time because it doesn't make sense in any other context. It doesn't fit his character. It doesn't fit um, what we've seen before. I mean, even what we want to see, it doesn't make sense. It's just a poor decision on the part of the choreographer. Mm -hmm. That kind of logic applies to Sidious as well as anyone else. But some things we're about to point out in a minute are going to seem to fly in the face of that. We're like, well, Reddy, you're, you're pointing out specific moves. You know, he's doing something stupid. Why aren't you pointing out that in other people? It fits the character. And the thing is, those sorts of moves are also something that constantly show up in what Paul Patine does, whereas with a lot of the other fighters, they're just a quick little aesthetic thing that they just put mm -hmm. in to make the fight look cool. Whereas right. with Paul Patine, it's like his entire fighting style is defined by those moves. Same with Yoda. That's why I got such a poor, uh, such a low opinion of Yoda. It's because his entire fighting style just makes not much sense. Mm -hmm. Whereas, Agreed. you know, when you compare it to someone like, like, Comparing the Yoda Dooku fight to the Mustafar duel, most of the moves in the Mustafar duel make sense. You got a few things in there that are kind of daft, but almost every single strike and parry in that fight is a valid strike and a valid parry. And in in fact, I'd say choreography wise, like purely in terms of choreography, the Mustafar duel is probably one of the best fights because it's got the least num the smallest number of crazy daft dumb moves yeah. they're still there but the number is mm -hmm. the smallest as especially impressive considering how long the fight is yeah. but every <laughs> right, but yeah. every single but every single move that yoda and paul patine do are like the fuck yeah. yeah and we'll get into that in a second but i just kind of want to dial it back to force abilities for a second uh connor you said something that i really liked a couple days ago when you sort of um not so much objected but kind of just gave your opinion on the idea of sidious being the most powerful dark sider ever if you would not mind sharing that again. Okay. Well, basically, I was just kind of talking about how Paul Patine is a guy who is on record multiple times stating that he sees lightsaber combat as a joke. This is not a guy who's going to be training regularly or with any enthusiasm because he just 
don't give a fuck. He's got better right. things to do. We'll talk about that when we about in, character. In a second, yeah. And the other thing was also what we mentioned earlier about what happens if you strip a specific force wielder of his force abilities, what I refer to as pulling an Ulic Keldroma. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm just kind of going back to try and look for the specific yeah. quote. Well, while he's doing that, something else I want to talk about, Sidious's force abilities. When you look at all the things he could do with, like, telekinesis and lightning, some people don't understand. that What he does is impressive, but not unprecedented. You ha- We have had instances where characters have done the things, things, Sidious has, things Sidious has done with the Force. Yes, he does it more easily than some, but it's not an unprecedented level of power. Like, you know, you see Sidious, you know, just collapsing temples or just, you know, blasting away stormtroopers with lightning. What do you see Yoda do? Okay, CIS landing ships. What do you see Luke do? Okay, bong, away. Mace Windu, who's not even a de- as dedicated of a force wielder as uh, Luke, Yoda, or Sidious, could just casually just swipe away, you know, super battle droids like it's nothing. You know, these, these are feats that other people can do. Darth Bane, Force Blast, he collapses, he collapses a temple like it's nothing. Darth Krayt just waves his hand and half the Sith temple goes down. It's like... And, and another point is the people he's using these Force abilities against. People like to constantly say, well, Sidious could just ragdoll anyone, right? It's from left hand center. He could ragdoll most people, yes. But the people we're talking about that would put up a good fight and can even contend with him um, are not people he's been seen ragdolling. Like... He no, didn't ragdoll say, Mace. It, he didn't so very yeah. easily mag- ragdoll Yoda. That means Yoda, he can't ragdoll Luke. He can't ragdoll um, uh, another example. Crate. Someone powerful. Uh, uh, crate. Not that many. Crate. Yeah, crate. Perfect example. Sorry. Um, yeah, he's, these are people that can take him, and for that reason. Yeah, we'll get to that tor- towards the end. It's like yeah, that's another thing too. Like literally, right. people say, oh, he, oh, he, you know, he ragdolled Darth Maul. He ragdolled Savage Press. That's really not that impressive. <laughs> that is not Neither impressive Savage or Darth Maul are dedicated force wielders. And in terms of level of power, they're nothing compared to, you know, the top tier masters. So their force defenses are nothing. Yeah. And the other thing is, is it also depends on just how much effort you put into mastering and building up your force defenses. Like Darth Bane versus Kasim. Darth Bane was decisively more powerful than Kasim by a huge margin. <laughs> yet Kasim, yet Kasim's force wall was able to hold up against Bane's force wave. Like, granted, he was still crushed to death when the temple fell down around him, but the wave itself did nothing to him. A wave that was explicitly pointed out as if it had been able to hit his body without being blocked, it would have basically just liquefied him immediately. But he was able to, to defend against that. He was able to protect himself, and he was able to do so despite being so much less powerful than Bane himself. It depends on just how much effort you put in to put into building up your defenses. And because of that, there are force wielders who are a lot less powerful in Palpatine who can still take him on because they got their super advanced force walls so they can guard against his telekinesis, and they got their super advanced two to menace so they can guard against his lightning, and they got their super advanced telepathic defenses so he can't play with them. Yeah, and guys, Maul has none of those. Neither does Savage. So him ragdolling them, like people say it's so impressive, it's really not. It's really not. These are the two people that were, you know, defeated single-handedly by Kenobi. And that's not exactly a slight against them, because, you know, Kenobi's amazing. But it's still Kenobi. Single person who was outnumbered by two people who should have been, if they're as great as people say they are, completely dominating him. Um, and they lost quite succinctly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So he, he, him ragdolling Maul means nothing at the end of the day compared to the great masters. Now, if he, if he, you know, if he, like, if in the movie, you know, he grabbed Mace Windu by his throat and snapped his neck, that'd be a different story. But he didn't, did he? No, yeah. he didn't. It's like there's also that one scene in TCW in the season six episode, The Lost One, where Paul Patine starts strangling Dooku from halfway across the galaxy. But the thing is, was Dooku putting up a force barrier in that scene? To was he expecting Paul Patine to grab him and start choking him? Was he expecting him expecting to be attacked in such a manner? No. no. Under normal like circumstances, also, that, that wasn't wouldn't have worked. So Sidious yeah. wasn't just snapping off. He was going... Yeah, that too. And in, normal, in a normal situation, people, him strangling him would not work. It would not work. Dooku can defend against that. He could defend against that. We know he could defend against that. So it makes no sense. You have to look at the context. Just because he did that once 
in that situation doesn't mean it's something he could just do at the drop of a hat. You have to look at the situation and how it was presented. Yeah. And please don't like, misunderstand this. We're that... not saying that any force defense can stop Sidious. You know, it, it is a balance no, of no, power. No, 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 no. But a point is you don't have to be on par with someone to defend against them. Um, certain abilities you need to be completely overpowering to not be able to negate. Uh, I mean, examples of people who could defend against Sidious is force powers, um, direct force powers, not necessarily the overall magnitude, um, would be Sh Shakti. Um, mm. Bane, uh, well, Mace Windu, obviously. Uh, we Anakin, know Mace Windu to an Kasim, Kasim himself is a pretty good example of someone who could guard against Palpatine's TK. Like, do I think Kasim could take Palpatine? No, no. the Force abilities are ultimately. <laughs> it would too just be the final all over again. Yeah, and it would be with most but... people. But the point is, they can defend for a time. Yes, they can. Um, they they yeah. can go against Palpatine and not die instantly yes and another thing too you know people like like to mention well you know sidious has mastered every single dark side force ability out there he hasn't that's another thing too he has a lot of abilities at his disposal sith sorcery sith magic stuff but when you actually look at it he fights he rarely use utilizes that that plethora of abilities in fact if you look you know, when he fights, you know, he only really sticks to about, like, three standards, that being physical augmentation, telekinesis, and lightning. Which, again, comes down to the fact that that's pretty much all he ever needs. It's mm -hmm. the, his mentality, his entire character when it comes to combat is built around that. I don't need this because I'm this. And most yes, of this and is right. But <laughs> there are many cases where he isn't going to be. Um, yeah, and just something else yeah. I'd like to point out. Darth Sidious, like, this is something a lot of people like to talk about. Darth Sidious cannot use the Shatterpoint ability. I just want to... We'll pull that out right now. It has never, ever even been touched upon that he can do it. You know, and the Mace Windu fight would have been a perfect time to see if he could do it. He can't do it, guys. He's never been yeah. witnessed using it. And by extension, if he can't use Shatterpoint, he can't use Dark Transfer and it, from Legacy. And, of course, it's also explicitly established in Legacy that Dark Transfer is a new, never-seen-before ability. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. there's no one else except for Cade and later Crate who can do this. They're the innovators who created it. Palpatine can't use that power. It's not something that's on his docket. No dark transfer, no shadow point ability. So people who say he's mastered everything, he hasn't. Yeah. You know, he could do a lot, you know, battle meditation, mind domination, force strain, even though he rarely uses it. Still. He can't, I mean, he, technically, he can't even use battle meditation. He can use battle dominance, uh, and which I don't think is that your name for it, but where he latches on and warps the mind and takes control. I mean, he did it to the entire Imperial fleet. That's why it's collapsed when he died, because they didn't, they were certainly lost their sort of guiding light. Um, he, but he can't do general battle meditation. He can't just no, no. seep into the mind and guide someone. He has to completely dominate them. Mm -hmm. And even if you look at TCW, like he used uh, force magics, but what did he have to do to actually use it? He had to go into this big ritual. He had to like say these incantations, have Dooku help him actually create an illusionary world. What, go go into the Tales of the Jedi. Exar Kun's just snapping off those Sith spells like at the drop of a hat, like it's nothing. So he could use those magics, but he doesn't have nearly the same potency in that field as you know true Sith sorcerers like Exar Kun, like Naga Sadal, like Ludo Kresh. Like, even Darth Zana, who, it's like, yeah, she did over-specialize in the spells of fear and madness, but the thing is, she was still able to effectively apply those in combat. Whereas Palpatine, I imagine he could if he really wanted to, but he, again, he's got no interest. It goes back to what Callan said. I don't need to be that because I am this. I don't need to use combative Sith sorcery because I can just rip you apart with telekinesis. Exactly. It's not a knock against the guy, it's just who he is. Yeah, and people don't get that. Like Whenever we criticize him, people say, oh god, you're insulting my favorite Sith Lord because I love him because he's powerful. But they, they, <laughs> it comes across that, this is obviously not everyone, but this comes, yes, yes, most yes. people seem to come across as like, oh, he must be the greatest Jewess ever because he's fighting some of the greatest Jewess ever. It's like, just because he's doing that, and granted he's doing it to a pretty damn good extent, doesn't mean it's his dueling skills that are carrying him through. It is m entirely his force speed. And we'll move on yes. to clarify that in a minute as to why. I'm not spiritual, mm -hmm. but it yeah. is his complete dominance in the force that allows him to go contend with these great masters. And he can. I mean, he will dominate most, all average masters um, with the force um, and can contend mm -hmm. with the absolute best of the best, despite being a relatively shitty duelist. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't change the fact that he is a relatively crap duelist. Yes. Yeah. Yes, his force abilities are what carry him through, and it's and again his level of power is not unprecedented. You have we have seen instances where people have done things on the level with Palpatine. So him saying, you know, Vish, he, Vitiate and Darth Krait are the two prime examples of this. 
Yes, like look yeah. at look what Darth Crate. And we'll, we'll we'll get to them when we get to characters who could stand up to him. But yes, they they could do things that Palpatine can't. Even Darth Bane, you know, collapses the ti- collapses the temple. You know, rips people apart with lightning. Like he could do these these things that Palpatine could do. Darth Plagueis, for God's sakes, his own master could you know rip people apart with telekinesis. So yeah, exactly. It's, a lot of this also. With a lot of people being in, insulted, it also really just kind of comes down to that real insane fanboyism where you're trying to attach yourself to one character that you see as invincible and unbeatable. All other characters bow down to this. It's like Darth Zana, very polarized fan base. Some people worship the ground she walks upon. Others see her as, you know, unworthy to even lick their boots. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, she's she's got her strengths. She's got her limitations. She's not invincible, but she's still formidable. Same with Exar Kun. It's like so many of the people who challenge my uh, conclusion in Exar Kun versus Darth Vader are people who can't imagine, who just give Exar Kun no credit whatsoever, who sell him short on all counts. When it's like, yes, Exar Kun has his shortcomings, but the thing is, that's part of the balance of his character. Exar Kun is the Oberon Martell of the Star Wars universe, mm-hmm. with all of the pros and cons that entails. You know, every single person has their pros and cons. It's like, I love Darth Vader to death. He's probably my favorite Sith Lord, but I don't say he's invincible. It's like if I were a raging diehard Vader fanboy, I'd never declare him any of his fights to be defeats ever. The reason why I think he can take Yoda is because I think is because I looked at the facts and figured, well, Vader's got all of these advantages over Yoda, and Yoda's only got a couple things against Vader, these things that Vader has already answered. But and by the same token, Vader would be defeated by Exar Kun because Kun has all of these advantages over him, and all of Vader's main assets are things that Kun has answered. So, you know, mm-hmm. it just continues exactly. on like that. People, we don't make these videos just to convey our fanboys, and we, we take an objective look. We don't go into this thinking, you know what, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure this character wins. If I, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, there have been several cases where, like, there have been, even I, yeah, where was I going with this? <laughs> I th- you know, there's, I'm just going to stop, because I was, yeah. bas- was going to start restating what you had already said, so. Yeah, we. Leave it there. Yeah. Plo Koon so. cannot beat Sidious. Yes. He's my favorite character. Kyle Katarn cannot fact. beat Darth Vader. Count Dooku cannot beat Sidious either. I think could well, I, I, I actually think Cal Katarn does have a pretty yeah, good chance of taking Perhaps. Vader. Oh, I definitely think he has a chance, but I, I like I, that's something I go back and forth with a lot because I just love Cal Katarn so much. Yeah, personally, I'd say I, I think pretty much guaranteed to, but that, that's where the opinion comes in. There are some the yeah. fine details of where the opinion comes in, but the, there are objective facts that you can't deny. Like there is no way in hell anyone on the Jedi Council outside of Mace and Yoda could ever beat Sidious um, in a one on one. In a one on one. But I think yes. in a one-on-one, that doesn't mean he's completely invincible. If they all mobbed him, he'd be dead instantly. If three of yep. the best of them mobbed him, he'd be dead. If not instantly, but he'd be dead. You know, it's yeah. If like, Mace I'll, brought I'll, three three different Jedi to that fight, we'll we'll cover that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. He based like I know we'll cover. I just want to say he kind of picked the three worst possible Jedi for an engagement with Palpatine because their skill sets are just so badly suited for engaging Palpatine. But we'll get into that later. Yes, I'll, exactly. I'll Exactly. Um, I'm trying to think of anything other force abilities related we should touch on. Um, I can't think of anything significant that won't come up later by natural mentioning. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, I already made my point. You know, Sidious's feats are not unprecedented. There, are, we have seen cases where other characters have done the things he could do. So that's really just the point I wanted to make. Should we move on to the opening points of the dueling then? We can't think of anything. Yeah. I think so. Well, yeah. time. We should start. This is the most important part of the video, basically, because this is where we're going to sort of really go down and uh, can deconstruct him as a fighter. Um, we'll start with the grounding for our logic because we are using real world logic to explain this. Um, we say Sidious is clearly a master duelist, as in he is a he, confirmed master of yeah, all seven forms. Yeah, he has the technical knowledge and skill to use all seven forms. We disagree that he's capable of using them without insane levels of force speed, covering his sloppiness. Um, in combat explanation for that uh well, against against, against the absolute sorry. you know against the masters level he is a master he's just not anywhere near one of the masters um mm-hmm. he was training to this extent the extent that he, in which he gained these these skills and talents years before we see him come onto the scene years and years and 
in that time when he comes onto the scene, he has not been shown particularly practicing. He's not a character that would be inclined to. He has no real option availability to. It takes a lot of time to get to maintain the level, get to, and then maintain the level of skill that we're talking about. If you want to argue that he's one of the best, um, and he doesn't have anyone to fight. Once he kills off Plagueis, he's got Maul, who he has to personally train. So going full out against him to sharpen his own skills, he's just going to get his apprentice killed. Um, Dooku is out on the other side of the galaxy fighting a war for him, um, and isn't someone he could allow to think that he had a chance anyway. He has to always be completely dominating him at all times to keep a leash on him. Um, and who else is there? Well, there's also Vader during the t during the reign of the Empire, but the thing is we know for a fact that they don't train together because Vader trains on his own with his own training droids as well Something as with that his was other dark... Of course, yeah, yes. my bad. I was yeah. thinking in the frame of... Uh, before we this, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just saying this is not this is not something that improves either. This is a consistent state of affairs that never changes. He doesn't really train in lightsaber dueling, and he doesn't have much opportunity, and he doesn't have much inclination. Yeah. So that's even if he... people, you, you... Sorry. Uh -huh. that's another thing, people. I, I, even if you reach a certain level of skill, you have to maintain it. If you like become a master of all seven forms and then not train for like a decade. You're not going to be at that same level of skill. It's like real life. You know, mas master sword fighters, master wrestlers, master, you know, whatever. They have to train to keep up their skills. Again, like real life. Sidious got to that level, but he never maintained it. And even then. Yeah. I mean, he was in like, the public spotlight and had no one to spar yeah, with. How he was, is he going to keep was it up? A politico, with no interest in it as well. Yeah. He was a politico. He was a chancellor. You know, he was always busy with politics and, you know, trying to destroy the galaxy behind the scenes. When is he going to practice? Like, what's he going to do? Is he just going to, you know, like, uh, cancel my appointments for, uh, you know, two hours? I'm going to go in my secret room and practice lightsaber combat. No, he's not going to be doing that. And that's another thing, too. It's like um, in the Revenge of the Sith, Sith novelization, uh, when Sidious retrieves his lightsaber from the, you know, the Bronzium Neranium statue, the book makes it, pr like, it, it explicitly stated that this lightsaber hasn't seen the light of day for decades. Decades, people. And let's not forget that even if he was willing or and able and going to spar yeah. to the against someone who could even hone his skills, which isn't really possible, um, going full force, he'd immediately reveal himself to the Jedi. This is someone who has to keep a tight lid on his power, because if he just bursts open the lid, which he's want to do, and is something he'd have to do to get that Mace Windu level, um, mm -hmm. which is what people always hold him up to, um, he's going to be he's going to be found. He can't do yeah, it. He can't yeah. train, think, not because think... he doesn't. I think it's also really, really telling that, yes, we do have confirmed instances of him and Maul sparring to train Maul, but the thing is, when you read a lot of the later stories that take place closer to Phantom Menace, Maul is doing his training with combat droids, not with his master himself. Mm -hmm. and, and another so, thing, too, um, there's also a training session in the Darth Plagueis novelization but they're never actually classing, clashing blades with each other. That training session is them hunting down animals and Sidious deflecting blaster bolts with droids. And, and in that instance, I'll... it's almost entirely implied that they will have fought together and trained together, but <laughs> one, there's no actual evidence of it to start with, so you can't use it as ironclad, even though it's almost entirely certain to be true. And also, that was years ago. That was like decades ago. That he wasn't even a senator was... then. Yeah, he was he was basically just some dumb teenager. Like at like that was Palpatine during his Joffrey Baratheon stage. <laughs> yes, quite. Oh, yeah, so well. he just can't train. He doesn't train. He doesn't want to train and and he doesn't have the time to train. He can't maintain his level of skill. He just can't. And, and then again, even his he, he is being trained by a master who has a specific noted distaste for lightsaber combat. Plagueis is not going to try and build his apprentice into the best swordsman in the galaxy because he doesn't give a crap about lightsaber combat. So it doesn't matter how many times the source book stage, it doesn't matter how many times the choreographers or creators say it, it does not make sense in any way, shape, or form for Sidious to be a ma the like, master Joyce everyone acclaims him to be. Low council ma master, mem member master at best. That That's his dueling capability. At best. Fixed. At best. Yeah. Now, yes. as... Now, I do think that there there is a certain amount of ingenuity to Palpatine's skill set and the way that he personally trained and built things up. But the thing is, it's like I said earlier, too. It's the fact that he attained lightsaber mastery as an 
as an egotistical exercise. He didn't become a great ma lightsaber master for the sake of being a great lightsaber master. He became a great lightsaber master specifically so he could, you know, show up the Jedi. And yeah. it's like, and it's like, even then, he's still on on record saying he sees lightsaber combat as a joke. That he like lightsaber combat and lightsaber training is to him at best a hobby. Mm -hmm. He's a hobbyist, yeah. a very good hobbyist. But a hobbyist. A, hobby, a hobbyist who has not practiced his hobby for years. He just went, okay, years, I'm, yes. it, that point where he says, I want to do it so I can show up the Jedi. That was in his early stages before he realized, wait a second, I'm going to have to become a politician and completely dedicate my life to the subtleties and his yes. interests. You know, it, it drops that. So all of that stuff isn't applicable throughout his entirety of his life. And again, it doesn't make sense for that to be the case. Characters change. People change. So characters change. It, yes. It, it's just not, it's, his drawing skill is just not arguably that great. At all. Yeah. He guys, he dueled he was in a fight to the death with lightsaber combat all of three times his entire life. Maul, Mace, Yoda. And all three times his victory was achieved ultimately through force power, not martial skill. And against more than a press uh, sorry, the, 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 we're not saying that he can't fight the best of the best with, light, with lightsabers. He can. But it's just not his skill, it's his force abilities. And not even his yes. force abilities, it's his force power speed or general augmentation overall and yeah. mental dominance i mean he he can make yeah. you like run in terror just by grinning if he wanted to yeah yeah you know, he is toying with more than a press like throughout the entirety yeah. of the fight at the end he uh, yes he does ramp it up a little bit just to get just to show maul off but that is not his full power no one can argue that he's going up against maul even like half of his power at that point because Mm -hmm. If he could, then he... If that was his full just power... Just incinerate then, the both of them just right there. Yeah, if Maul could make, meet that level of dominance and speed, then he wouldn't lose to the amount of people he does. Because if Sidious is going full pelt then, at that point when he's fighting Maul, we have to arguably believe that he is moving fast enough to kill three masters it, like that. Because he can do that. As ridiculous as it is, he has actually killed three masters in about two seconds. Yeah, we'll talk about that yeah. in a second. Yeah, yeah when we get Maul to, can't when we contend get to... with that. So that yeah, fight exactly. is not Sidious at his best. No. And no. why would it be? He's just toying with him. He's, he's, he's not going to care. Like exactly. a toy to him. Exactly. Yeah. So Sidious and is not it's... inclined. He is not dedicated. He is, he is just not, not you know, a martial artist. He is not a martial artist Yeah. at the end it's of the day. Like, it's like Palpatine is a lot like a lot of the classic ancient Sith Inquisitors. He uses a lightsaber because he needs to, not because he wants to. Well, he does want to, but only as an egotistical exercise. But, you know, given the choice, it's like if told, okay, you're going into a whole bunch of fights. What do you want to do? Lightsaber combat or force abilities? Paul Patin is like, yeah, no question. It's like everything about his skills is like, yes, dyed in the wool, classical Zhu Ya specialist, because that's the force, the oh, lightsaber yeah. form that's all about drawing on your rage and motivating your lightsaber offense with your power in the force. But the thing is, is he a skilled Zhu Ya master? No, he is a berserker Zhu Ya master. Yeah. It's like Palpatine basically has two fighting modes. He's either coming at you trying to cut you to ribbons as quick as he can, or he's doing a roving tactical retreat. Mm -hmm. And many of you might but, be thinking, well, aren't you contradicting yourself? You know, you're saying he's this great master and he can do this. And he's like, but no, you're just talking about speed. If you want actual evidence on top of what we're saying despite the whole character explanation and why it doesn't make sense for him as a character and a person look at the fight with the press and maul as he's stepping out of the uh balcony um when fighting sort of moving backwards through the corridor out onto the balcony with those guys you see him do this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like three or four times just he's swinging at maul he's and literally just flailing his sabers around it's like laughably he just doesn't care. ridiculous I mean, yeah. that is, that's him entirely. He doesn't care if he... Sidious technique, yeah. technique is shit. His technique is shit. And it can afford to be because he's so fast. Um, it yeah, doesn't it matter doesn't matter. Sloppy. It doesn't matter if he moves his arm up here and gives like a massive opening because if you try to exploit it, full speed, immediately counted. Yeah. It, he can do that and does do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you can do it. But it doesn't change the fact that that will affect your skills as a duelist. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like, like that... if you... Oh. It's like if you come... Like, Taking two Form 7 masters, Palpatine and Maul, and comparing their conduct to each other, how does Palpatine achieve all of his victories in lightsaber combat? By blitzing you with speed and hacking you to ribbons in a heartbeat. Whereas when you compare that to what Darth Maul does, Maul is calculated and precise. It's like one of my favorite little bouts is the one-on-one -on -one between Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn at the tail end of the Duel of Fates. When you observe Maul's conduct in that bout, 
he's not blitzing Qui-Gon, he is dismantling Qui-Gon in a very calculated and very thought-out manner. He is kind of approaching Qui-Gon Jinn like he has just taken him apart. And it was just so great to watch that bit because Maul's conduct is just so clean and precise and so perfect. You never get anything even remotely resembling that from Palpatine. All of Palpatine's lightsaber combat victories are due to him just, well, ripping you apart with blinding speed and power. It's like the way he defeated Maul in on a Mandalore in TCW. It's like the way he disarmed Maul, that sort of butterfly block. That's it's, it's was, ridiculous. No butterfly block should ever be attempted as in a real fight. It's a move that makes zero sense, but he was able to make it workable because his speed and his power was just so up there. It's right. like, yes, in his fight with Savage Opress, it's like, yeah, he was able to meet Opress head to head in a blade lock, but that's only because he was able to channel his power in the force and boost his strength. And it's like so many of his moves in that fight made zero sense but they worked because he was powerful. Like that whole thing where he did the two blades behind the back and blocked their press and strike. Oh, that's, that's block should not have worked whatsoever. He should have broken had, his wrists. He had no leverage. He was in an awkward position, but he made it work because he was so powerful in the force that he could just make himself as strong as he needed to be to make this ridiculously dumb move work. And that's where what all of Paul Patin's moves are. They're moves that are fucking stupid, but he's yes. able to make them work because exactly. he's so fucking powerful. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. like, it's, it is very much classic form seven master. He is spastic. He is unpredictable. He is willing to do the insane. But the only reason why this works is because he's so powerful in the force. Take away his force abilities and put him in that fight with Opress. Opress would just slam into him like a bulldozer and sweep him away. And there'd be nothing that Palpatine could do and could do to stop him. And I hate Opress. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, he's, coming from he's, him, is, yeah, Connor is arguing that Opress has more technical sophistication than Palpatine. That's Opress. And Opress. you see that in that fight. I mean, yes. that, that block, if nothing else, even if, if he didn't have the strength of the force behind him, his own blades would have sliced him. Like, the blade his arms, arms smashed, off. Knocked the blades forward and, oh, crap, my shoulders on back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it just comes down to this. It's like um, it's like an, anal um, an analogy I made actually in this sort of comment thing that inspired this. If you take two fencers, one of which is decisively better, in a normal fight, you know, the more skilled fencer is going to just, you know, take down the less skilled one in an instant, you know, no problem. But if the less skilled fencer is able to move at the, near the speed of light, it's not going to matter how skilled the better swordsman is because in the time it takes him to unsheathe his blade and strike once – the speed of light guy has already hacked him to pieces six times over and then walked away. And, and that's, that's pretty much Palpatine in a nutshell. In he entirely, doesn't yeah. need skill. And he doesn't need precision. And that's why I don't get people complaining when we point this out. Because we're not saying that he's weak. We're not saying that he can't fight the best of the best. We, he can. He's done it. It's very obvious and makes sense in the context. His power lets him do it. I mean, he's yes. an egotistical maniac that doesn't have to try 99.9% .9 of the time. That, why is that something that people take as an insult? Because it yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's him in a nutshell. Yes, he is. He, he is his master. Amped. He has the same weaknesses as Darth Plagueis. You know, again, not a dedicated lightsaber duelist, but he gets by because of his strength and the Force. And he has the same weaknesses. Put him against a skilled lightsaber duelist who can match his power. He's got nothing. And Just like should, his master. Yeah, and perhaps we should transition now into those people because there are a lot of yes. Them. Now we're going to talk about the people who could stand up to and, def possibly, and even defeat Sidious. Yeah, obviously the three masters he killed in Revenge of the Sith, Saisi Teen, Aegon Kolar, and Kit Fisto, are not among them. Yeah, but... let's, let's explain how that fight worked out Yeah, for a second. Base, Let... Like, firstly, the Revenge of the Sith novelization made it clear that he defeated them through trickery, not through skill. It's like there was the whole bit in the novel where it's like, Master Teen, you're a telepath. What am I thinking right now? And Master Teen's like, okay, mm -hmm. what's he thinking right now? And then in that moment of distraction, Palpatine just blindsides him. And then Marvel even that, notes that his blade dipped when that happened. It says Tin's blade dipped. Um, so he lowered his blade and cocked his head. It's like open, open, everything's open, head. And let's make it clear that no matter how you try and explain this scene, it will never make sense because it was ludicrous in conception. But 
I mean, no one with that level of experience is going to fall to like a huh, just a distraction technique. Someone is going to have tried that in, against him in a sparring arena. He's not going to go, oh, what? Lower guard. If he's going to turn his head, he's going to keep his guard up. But regardless of that, Palpatine, no one, no one physically in the entirety of Star Wars can kill three of the best masters of an era, even if they're not the reigning masters, some best masters, um, in like less than two seconds. It's not possible. It was like, yeah. yeah. Two of them he caught but, off, off guard, and that's the only reason they died. And then that's left Mace Windu and Kit Fisto to face him alone. Yeah. And the reason and Kit Fisto died is because of the nature of his fighting style, because Shicho is bad in single combat, and Shicho has poor lightsaber defense. And against a fighter like Palpatine, that is just, you know, yeah. that's a crippling weakness. Yet yeah, note, he manages to hold off a few attacks. Now, if Palpatine was his masterful duelist, that everyone thinks he is, plus as fast as he obviously is, how is someone who is inferior in that regard from that point of view, plus weak against single opponents, going to defend against that? Kit Fisto had all that against him, and he still lasted, both in the movie and the novel. That pr pretty much seals the point about uh, Palpatine's, Palpatine being sloppy, because someone that fast cannot struggle against someone who's that visibly slower without there being some sort of uh, technique element involved like kenobi um taking on grievous for example i mean he's not moving as fast as grievous he's just using the subtle block techniques to cut the distance between the transitions and the movements that kind of logic is applying in this fight because palpatine is sloppy i mean mm -hmm. this is the person who went and then leapt and twirled jumping over his desk towards four jedi masters that if the scene was realistic would have defeated him at that point Yep. And he still did it anyway, because he's Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I'm and, and so let's, so, okay, so let, let's go through people who can be, obviously, like you said, the big ones, well, the big ones that people often say that the only people who could defeat, you know, Sidious are Luke Skywalker and Yoda. Not true, Mace, not true. Mace Windu. Well, oh, yeah, nice mo like most people yeah. think it, most people just think it's just Yoda and, and Luke, which for reasons we'll get to in a second. But here's the thing. Yes, you know, Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, he has strength in the force equal to, if not greater than Sidious. And he's an absolute master of lightsaber combat. Sidious has no chance. He's pretty much the only person that will definitively always beat Sidious. Yeah. Yoda, you know, they fought in the movie. We saw how, how that went. Well, if you look in the movie, Yoda is definitively the better martial artist of the two, you know. What is Sidious doing? He's like, ah, like when Yoda's jumping in, like Yoda, and what's Yoda just, he just block, and then Sidious like, ah, he's struggling, he was struggling to overpower Yoda. And that's not just the force ability of, factor as well, it was the yes. grip, I mean, the parries were technique, well, exactly. Well, technically speaking, and, well, yeah. well gripped. Like, the other thing is also the fact that it's like, it's like, what is, what sort of moves is Palpatine using in that fight? What is he doing against Yoda? Well, basically, he's just hacking at him. Like, that's all he's doing. Like, there's, there's no clever, precise techniques. There are no feints or anything. He's just like, boom, 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 boom. Like, super fast, fast sequence of attacks, but that's all he's doing. He's just hacking at him. Yeah, and guys, he ditched that lightsaber. He ditched. It. He pretty much ditched his lightsaber in that fight almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, Yoda. Uh, yeah. He can. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Colin? sorry, I didn't mean to cut off. I didn't mean to continue. No, yeah. and like you know, in in their bout of force abilities, were guess well, guess what? Yoda was able to contend with him. I don't really. I don't agree with the perception that they're exactly equals in terms of power. I actually, I'm actually of the opinion that Sidious is slightly more powerful than Yoda in the force. Combatively but speaking, so what? I agree. Yeah, combatively speaking. Is what I mean, but still, Yoda was able to contend despite that that weakness. Mm -hmm. And well, the, again, we're pointing out this as though, oh, Sidious is doing stupid things in a fight, you know. But blah, blah, it, um, why, that's evidence. We get that 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 everybody has that, you know. You can point at various different things for almost every single character and say that's stupid. Then you must be stupid as well. You're just cherry picking for someone you don't like. But the difference is where that that evidence fits the character. In most cases, it doesn't. If it, if so, if a piece of evidence fits the entirety of the idea behind a character and and then makes your argument solid, that makes sense. It's when it's something that flies in the face of the character that doesn't. Yeah. So that's the why the only reason, this. yeah, the only reason Palpatine, you know, made it out of that, that duel is because, you know, aside from the whole Yoda circumstance things, because, you know, of his overwhelming power in the force, not his martial skill. If, you know, if it was based purely off martial skill, Yoda would have destroyed Palpatine. And granted, the same thing can be said for Yoda, but we're not True. arguing that. We're just saying that Yoda yes. is definitely better than Yoda's. Yoda's yeah. detraction doesn't come from his skill, it comes from his physicality. I mean, pretty much every, exactly. every single, without the Force, every single yeah. form is useless to him because of his 
Yeah, so I was in, I, there's there's no question that Yoda is a super skilled lightsaber master. It's just, you know, I do have an issue with the fact that his applications of it, the forms at his disposal is just so textbook, but that doesn't change the fact that there's still very refined, high-level applications of, mm -hmm. you know, whatever form he's using at, at that moment. It's not like Yoda's an amateur. I'm just saying that Yoda's got a whole bunch of practical deficiencies. That's why I don't really hold him super, super high. Yeah. He knows what he's doing, and he's actually got, despite the fact that his entire fighting technique is basically nothing but stage choreography, he still has more technique than Palpatine because Palpatine is doing a whole bunch of stupid, unworkable moves that only work because he's got the power and the force. Whereas Yoda, even though Yoda's opening himself up all the time with stupid flips and twirls, he's still performing his cuts correctly. I he know. still has okay. he still has good footwork. He still he still performs his acrobatics like a proper trained gymnast. It's not like Palpatine just corkscrewing through the air. It's like Yoda's flips are still graceful and have form. It's just mm -hmm. none of his moves make much sense, but the moves themselves are still good. And unlike right, now Palpatine, let's... he doesn't have any options, so he has to do that. Because fling... yeah. aiming yeah. and flinging himself at the opponent is pretty much the only way he's going to get an attack in, because he's too small. Yeah. Now, now, stepping away from Luke and Yoda, let's get, let's get to everybody else. Mace Windu. Yeah. Mace Windu defeated Palpatine, people. He defeated yeah. Palpatine. It is now, true Cal that he threw the fight. That doesn't change the fact that he had the fight dominated for the most of it. So yes, so yeah. yes but right. Should we just go for the entire explanation of what we think, how we think that fight would go? Because we have a consensus. Yes, on let's this, do we? that. Yes. Yeah, because we don't get any misinterpretations. Basically, those two were dead set equal for the entirety of that fight. Mace had the dominant um, edge in terms of he was kind of leading Palpatine around, and it is true that Palpatine was letting him lead him around. But essentially, they were dead equal. Palpatine threw the fight, so Mace won, but it was a it was a fight throw. That does not mean, as pretty much everybody on the internet seems to think uh, it does, that Palpatine could have won at any moment. He couldn't. They were dead equal. Um, that fight would have basically gone on for age, ages and ages and ages. Pal Palpatine amping up the uh, dark side, getting more angry, more uh, forceful, because when he's amping himself, he does just throw himself in and become an open wound in the Force. You know, that's how he operates. And Mace with the nature of Varpard, would have kept looping it around and looping it around and looping it around and bolstering himself in the same to the same degree and kept going until basically Sidious just blew himself up. The question <laughs> is not who would win. The question is whether or not Mace would survive the explosion. <laughs> that is pretty much fact. Yes, exactly. And that, that also... Because yeah. there's a lot of mis, mis, um, you know, misconceptions about the whole Varpad thing. And it's I hate when people say that you know, without Vapad, Mace wouldn't be can't contend with Sidious. No, that is complete bullcrap. I'm sorry, but you know, we, let's get uh, let's get into that. Ignore the Vapad effect. Mace Windu is unquestionably still the greatest swordsman in the Jedi Order. Like ignoring the superconducting loop, he still created his own martial art. He still mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat. It's like this. It's like he is regarded as a great lightsaber instructor in his own right. It's like Mace Windu, it's like he is the greatest swordsman in the Jedi Order at that point in time, even without the superconducting loop of Vapad, which means that even just on the back of his own power and the Force, which I, we estimated it to be about 60% that of Palpatine, he still would have been able to contend. No, he wouldn't have been able to win just on the back of his own power and his own skill. Palpatine's power and the Force was too much for it. The Vapad effect just made up the difference and made victory a possibility for yes. him. But he would still, just on the back of his pure skill, he would still have been able to contend with Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Vapad is not could. Mace's only Trump, Trump card. And, um, you know, Callan, I would, if you would mind going into your little explanation on the whole Vapad thing, because, again, we really got to clear this up because people don't seem to understand how Vapad works or what Vapad is or how, you know, that it worked in that fight at that time. Yeah, people look, in that, look at that fight and they think, okay, Vapad, useful ability, uh, superconducting loop, it's what gave him the edge, it's what meant, meant that he could even survive Palpatine. That is not true by itself. Varpad is a full working uh, martial art technique. It was created by Mace in the sparring arena against other opponents that helped shape it um, with him. Sora Bok, Deepa Balaba. Said people could not use the full extent of Varpad. They could not just fight Palpatine because Varpad yeah, fights him. You can't put, if you were to put Deepa Balaba or Sora Bok in that situation with Palpatine, 
like people think, you know, if if you're going by the logic on, if some people are, you know, using Vophead by their logic, they would be able to contend just as well. But they can't. No, Sora Bolt wouldn't last a second against against um, Palpatine, and Deepa wouldn't fare too much better. Yeah, it just wouldn't happen. Um, and let us not forget, people under, people underestimate the magnitude of that situation as well. Mace had never field tested Varpad, not to the point where it was guaranteed to work. You know, as a fail safe against people who are more powerful than him. It was something that he. It was a theory, and even in that fight, his theory was blown away. He the first time he it was pretty much the first time he'd used it. Complete amateur in terms of the superconducting loop. Anyway, obviously he was a master of the art itself, but the superconducting loop had not been tested. He throws himself against Sidious, one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time and somehow manages to get that super work connecting loop not only working, but transcended to the point where it blew all of his previous expectations out of the water. Like, he was like, this is beyond Varpard. Like, what the hell am I doing? How am I managing to keep this up? That is Mace. That is not Varpard. And let's not forget, even if it was Varpard, he's the guy who invented it. Why do people yeah. just think, oh, it's an ability, therefore he can win? It's not. It's Mace. Mace is the person who dro drove the force of Varpard and drove the force that helped him contend in that fight. Helped him stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I hate it when people just take that away from Mace, as though it's not, like, without Valpard, he couldn't be anything. You know, he created it. He mastered it. And again, that was its test run. Imagine what he could do with practice. His test run of the superconducting loop worked against the most powerful Darksider of all time. What does that tell you? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, do you under... Some people don't understand how many things he was doing in that moment, too. Like, he, you know, like you are saying, yeah, he field-tested Bob... the other day, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, field, te field testing it, it went, it blew, you know, beyond his expectations. He was still contending all at the same time. And he, he still surprised. contended. He was like, well, what the yeah. hell, what's going on? How am I doing this? On top of thinking tactically, not that that's his specialty, you know, it's Mace Windu, it's not the brightest spark in the shed. But <laughs> on top of that, on top of keeping up the phys uh, martial arts technique, on top of keeping up the speed, because they are basically, to an outside observer, blurring in and out of existence at this point, you know, this is the most intense light schedule of pretty much all time, and... He's testing. He's just testing. He's like, well, let's use this. Oh my god, it's, over it's working, it's working, it's working. It's just... <laughs> and people are going on about, like, oh, well, Palpatine could have won at any moment. It's like, yes, because that's how that fight was going. Palpatine was thinking, oh, yes, this is going to be over from the slightest. No, he was completely, he was at full strength. He was throwing everything he had into it. And only mm -hmm. through the fight when convenience turned up and thought, oh, yeah, Anakin can solve this. And then switched back to tactical, cunning, manipulative mind, mm -hmm. not combat one. He was only yeah. in the control of the grand scheme. He wasn't in control of the fight itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Like, in fact, I'd say there's a pretty good chance that Palpatine on some level might have understood that defeating Windu was, if not an impossibility, but so difficult that he'd rather not have to deal with it and he'd rather just take this guy down through treachery. So, of course, he goes into this fight just wanting to think, I just need to hold out until Anakin gets here because Anakin, being the dolt he is, is inevitably going to come here. Yeah, but if he didn't come come there, people, it's like Callan said, it would have just ended with, you know, he just building, 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 power, power, power. Until his body just failed and he yeah. dropped dead and exploded because, yeah. you know, Pretty it's much. like that I will said. happen when he uses enough power. Because here's the thing, he was only able to, you know, he was, you know, like, you know, fighting Mace, he's like, why aren't you dead? He, so I better pour more dark side power into my moves. Oh, you're still not dead. Okay, let me pour more. And Mace is just taking everything he's pouring into him and just reflecting it back at him with equal force. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's not doing it easily, but he's doing it. And on a test run, again, this is the first time he's ever really used Varpad and he's pulling it off. Um, and that's without counting into the fact that, um, uh, what was I going to say? There was something I was missing. Shit. Damn it. No. There was something else I mentioned the other day, Evan, that was a significant aspect of that fight. Uh, it wasn't Shatterpoint, because we already talked about that. Um, for test run, superconducting loop. Thinking about uh, it. Mm. Oh, damn it. Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> it's it's going to come to a come... point. Yes. Yeah, I'm missing. We already made the Kit Fisto argument. Yeah. It's... Oh yeah, sorry. Um, the, the it's not this one, but there's another addition, addition point. The endurance side of things. Yes, they're both getting tired, and yes, Mace Windu isn't someone who can go on forever. I'm not saying that um he wasn't strained, but uh, that loop was feeding Windu. Um, and mm. there it is. There's the other point. The loop isn't just something you keep going casually. He has to maintain constant uh awareness and make sure that dark side energy doesn't just overwhelm him, but doesn't touch him, because he's not getting corrupted by it either. He's taking all of that power and not only making it function for him but actually keeping up that incorruptible shell on top of mm -hmm. everything else 
that's a huge factor for me because most people, even if they manage to make it work, would be corrupted by it. I mean, they're being shown the most powerful thing of all time, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's fighting in a black hole. He's fighting it. He's like, <laughs> and he's just doing it. <laughs> First time, yeah. no practice. I think it is really telling, too, is that once the fight is over and you got Mace Windu standing over Palpatine with his lightsaber at his throat, what's Palpatine doing? He is panting. He is exhausted. In fact, I'm pretty sure he was probably sweating like a pig. Whereas what is Windu doing? Well, Windu is still even and in control. It's like you can tell. It's like he's like a guy who just had a long, you know, 20K run. The thing is, yes, he is. He is kind of tired but the thing is he is exhilarated at the same time and he's still ready for more whereas Paul Patine is just kind of like old man (sighs) 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 and yes he was putting some of it on for Anakin's sake but he was like that before Anakin entered uh, even if he could sense him and it wasn't all that fake his face did you know melt when he started he was he was screaming in pain yeah you know Mace if Anakin was not there Mace would have won that, at that point, yes. granted, he wouldn't. The fight wouldn't have been thrown to put them into that situation in the first place. But again, that goes back to the explosion argument. Mace yes. is more in control of that fight, even if he w- wouldn't technically win. Yes, I. Yeah, that's that's unarguable, really. But would he once he was that, explosion. That, yeah. That so let's. Was, yeah, yes. that was not a that was not a fight. That was just an apocalyptic event. <laughs> Basically, True. it was a. Fight. It was just a natural disaster in the force. Is what that fight was. Yeah, and another thing. So let's move into the people, the other people who could you know stand up to him. Uh, let's talk about Dooku, because a lot of people also get that wrong idea. Guys, Dooku is a better lightsaber duelist than Palpatine by a significant margin in terms of pure technique. It, it, yeah, look, look, what is Palpatine doing? Fla- he's flailing. He's like, like, like if Dooku was confronted by that, what would he do? Ding, mm. you're dead. It would be like because it's Juya. You know, Berserker going up against Cool Kam Mikashi. He's perfectly optimized for taking on an opponent like that. It, it would literally, a pure lightsaber duel between Palpatine and Dooku would literally just be a case of deflect, deflect, stab you in the heart, I win. And, and, and here's the thing Sidious has even made note of Dooku's skills on several occasions. Uh, Darth Maul, son of Dathomir, he, you know, when Mother Talzin's possessing Dooku, he, he, um, he says right out flat, you know, you possess Dooku's body, but you possess none of his skill, and then, you know, blasts him back. That just proves right there that Sidious is aware of Dooku's extreme level of skill. Dooku himself was already stated to be on par with Mace Windu and Yoda. We know he is, too. To an extent. But of course, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm just yeah. saying all around. Oh, yeah, yeah skill-wise, definitely. Um, and, again, we're not saying that Dooku could fight Sidious and win, even have a hope of winning. We're just saying that um, he could contend because his lightsaber skills and general speed, while not far as good as uh, speed-wise, not as fast as Sidious, is enough to fight him. Yeah, and, the and he is makes very the powerful in the Force. Like we've explained, the whole Force choke thing wouldn't really happen because he is powerful enough to contend and he is definitively the better swordsman, which means there does exist a chance that in a straight head-to-head battle, Dooku could defeat Sidious. He could. He w- not it's, saying he would. Not, pe- not saying he would, people, but he could. It's it's unlikely, but it's still a possibility, which is, you know, that's something worth noting. It's the fact that there are a lot of characters in the Star Wars universe who, you know, yes, ch- if they were to fight Paul Patine, the odds are very strongly against them winning. But the thing is, they still have a possibility of, of winning. If they do everything right and Paul Patine does everything wrong they could come out on top. Exactly. So um, Dooku can contend. And let's move, now let's go further down the chain, because, watch, should we, should we talk about the cheering should, system now? Should, should, before we do that, should we split and say people we think you could fight him overall, based on overall combative performance, and then people who can take him because of dueling? Because we've kind of okay. drifted between the two. I, okay. I think so, yeah. Okay, so one fighter that I think could definitively defeat Paul Patin. Like, obviously, you know, obviously, Paul Patine would still be a major challenge. And if this guy fucks up, he's dead. Yeah. With it, yeah, obviously. But the guy that I would put my chips on, if he were to fight Paul Patine, would be Darth Krayt. Yeah, we've talked about this a lot, too. Darth Krayt, like, people, like, I'm just going to say it out flat. Darth Krayt alone could defeat Revenge of the Sith, Darth Sidious, and has a very high chance of defeating uh, Dark Empire, Darth Sidious, which we'll explain in a second. Yeah. Um, 
lightsaber the capabilities. Thing, oh, Crate Crate is an advanced master of Nyman. He is arguably the reigning master in his era. It's like he is stated to be one of the greatest sword masters of his time. You know, he is just that good. And, you know, he's got the dual blades thing, too, which kind of helps compensate. Like, obviously, if Palpatine attacks him with Jarkai, that's not an advantage. But still, Crate outclasses Palpatine in terms of raw skill to a massive degree. It's like Palpatine mm -hmm. is like mid to low tier council master in terms of raw skill. Crate is like he is tier one. He is up there with Yoda mm -hmm. and Windu in terms of raw skill. But the big thing is also power and the force, because what so many people forget is that how did Crate build up his powers? Well, he spent not quite a century in stasis, you know, with his body in stasis to lengthen his life while astral projecting and exploring the netherworld of the force, attaining... Mm -hmm boosting his powers to a massive degree doing that. And then there was that whole thing where he learned how to use Dark Transfer and willed himself back to life after dying. Not with he willed himself he back it. into existence. It wasn't even a case of him using Essence Transfer into a new body. He, he willed his physical being back to life. No one else has ever done that in history of Star Wars. Not like that. And Dark yeah. Crate did it. And again, Dark Crate? Transfer... Dark transfer gives him a huge advantage over Sidious because of because uh, of its nature. It's a it's an ability Sidious can't use and an extremely potent one, nonetheless. And the thing is, dark dark transfer is also directly tied to Shatterpoint. It is one of the practical applications of the Shatterpoint ability, which means that if he can use dark transfer, he can also use Shatterpoint because you know they go hand in hand. Yeah, it's a specialized application of Shatterpoint. Shadow point. It's someone, so basically, we have someone who can move as fast as Sidious with more raw skill and interest in fighting because he's a warrior where Sidious isn't. More experience because he's actually lived far longer. Yeah, he's, um, he's, he lived as a Tusken warrior. He was a fully trained Jedi Knight and a fully trained Sith Lord who's lived for over a century. He swipes the floor with Palpatine in terms he, of uh, Crate combat experience. Al Crate explicitly stated that he has fought and killed thousands of people. Yeah. He is thousands. He has killed thousands of people, you know, in close quarters martial arts combat. Has Palpatine done that? No. Palpatine has killed thousands of people with his force abilities, but how many people has he gone close quarters with? Not many. And we know it's close quarters because not only was it said, but he has the mentality of a Tuscan warrior. They value close quarters combat as one of the highest forms of expression. And so many mixes as well. He's got the raw primal fury. He's got the you know, strong cerebral intellect. I mean, he'd meditated for a hundred years, for Christ's sake. He's got the physical edge from the being able to resist one of the most horrific torches in the uh, known universe. Yeah. You know, he's got every edge in that regard as well. So he's got the speed to match um, Sidious. He's got the raw force power to match him. He's got the experience, skill edge. He's got the interest edge He in, you know, combat and warrior mentality. Uh, and on top of that, he has Shatterpoint. That's a huge advantage as well. Sidious yeah. stands no Again, chance. Shatterpoint, yeah. you know, the thing that, you know, points out glaring weaknesses against the slop, one of the sloppiest masters of all time. Yeah. You and yeah, that's the thing. It's like crates powers in the force. Like I will, you know, if someone can, is constantly pushing that Palpatine's more powerful than crate, I will concede that point, but it's not to a huge degree because look at everything that crate accomplished. And the thing is crate is powerful in all the right ways to take down Palpatine. He's got comparable lightning. He's got comparable TK. Plus, he's got Dark Transfer and Shatterpoint, which is what pushes things in his favor. It's kind of the Yoda Mace argument. Yoda's better with the whole fl f sending things flying in a massive storm of abilities, uh, whereas Mace is better with the personal combat uh, approach, which is the same for Crate and Sidious. And Crate has both. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, both, he's no, by own. no means weak in the grand scale stuff. It's just he's not his you know, no. personal preference. And, and people like, I hate it when people say, oh, he'll, you know, he, he struggled with Cade Skywalker. Two problems with that. He never struggled with Cade Skywalker. Even when he was Vong infested and severely underpowered, he literally just swept Cade aside like it was nothing. Two, people also underestimate Cade's level of skill, not only as a martial artist, but as, in terms of force ability. In terms of martial skill, Cade is easily, you know, mid tier council master level. You know, just seeing what this guy could do, just, you know, just carving through Sith like it's nothing. Like, this guy is extremely skilled, and we know he practices a lot, so that's something for Cade. But another thing people don't get is Cade's strength in the Force. Cade has massive 
power he's, in he's the a force. Skywalker. I mean, he may be very diluted, nah. so it's taking it down to the, the reasonable level as opposed to Luke Skywalker. He level. discovered dark but, transfer, perfected it, and like I say, he's just blowing away Sith like it's nothing. Cade is extremely powerful in the force, and Crate batted him aside like he was nothing. Cade is easily like if he's you know mid tier council master in terms of saber skill, he's definitely upper tier in terms of just raw force elemental power when you see what this yeah. kid has done. I mean, granted, he's not so, quite think, as refined uh, in combat. He's not as refined. Yeah. That's so his that's biggest weakness. He's not as refined. But, it, but, but just in terms of raw, just, you know, oof. elemental fury, it's holy crap. This kid is dangerous. Yeah. So, again, and again, Crate just casually, like, there's even a scene in the comic where he literally just casually just flicks his wrist and Cade goes flying into, into a block of um, stone. Casually. We, he have did that. Seen, yeah. we have not seen Sidious do that to people of comparable power. Um, he's no. done it to obviously far weaker to people and can do it to almost anyone, but someone who is near his level, he can't do it to. Yeah. No. Crate, Crate is a fucking beast. That's what Crate, Darth Crate is. He is a beast. And Palpatine can't deal with that. He, he just... No, he can't. He just, he just can't. It's like Palpatine can compete in terms of raw power and probably exceeds in terms of raw power. But the thing is, is that Krayt just has all of these advantages that Palpatine just can't deal with. And the thing is, any one of these advantages would still make it so that Krayt could contend with Palpatine. And he's got all of them, and they stack. Yep. Mm -hmm. And people, you don't... Um, having raw power, that's another thing a lot of people forget, having raw power is not the only thing you need to attain victory. Otherwise, it's not... Elijah Press would be uh, quite high up the list in ears. Exactly. You need more than raw power to be the more viable in a contest of skill. You need, you know, physical com combat advantage. You need tactics. You need physicality. You all these things have to stack up just right for them to actually have a good outcome. You know, there are several precedences, you know, in various you know Star Wars media where we have had you know lesser force wielders overcoming greater ones because guess what. You know, they're better martial artists. Again, Kasim, probably the best example of that. Yeah, it's like Luke's fight with Vader in Return of the Jedi, I see as a prime example. Because in terms of power and skill, Vader outclassed Luke by a huge degree. Like, Vader is up to that council master level in terms of power and skill. I say he's tier one, but Callum disputes this, but let's not get into that. Whereas Luke <laughs> I is... I dispute he's tier one. Okay, well, in terms of lightsaber skill, but let's not Vader get or Luke, into that. We're not, we're, we're, we're no, not no, getting no, into that. No, no, Va no, Vader. Yeah, Vader, but definitely. Luke, Luke, at that point in his development, was was Jedi Knight caliber. I wouldn't put him any higher than, than Kenobi, Attack, oh, of Clones. Attack of the Clones Kenobi. But what did Luke have going for him? An important advantage. He had experience fighting Vader. He had fought Vader twice before at that point on Mimbin and Splinter of the Mind's Eye and in Empire Strikes Back. So he knew what to expect from Vader, which is not something that any of Vader, that Vader had to deal with from any of his other opponents except for the Starkiller clone. Secondly, Vader was going into that fight with an ulterior motive. He wanted to turn Luke to the dark side, not kill him. Uh, sort of a reluctance that was made even worse by v the fact that Vader's connection to the dark side was being compromised by his love for his son. He did not want to fight Luke. He was not going into that fight trying hard. And secondly, and that's an advantage that was made all the worse by the fact that Luke was using psychological warfare tactics to undermine Vader further. And then when you actually observe all of the bits in that fight where Luke actually makes headway against Vader, it's established in the novel and made pretty damn clear in the movie that the only time he was able to, con to actually make headway against Vader and drive him back was when he was drawing on his rage to amp his, his combat performance and his offensive output. Let's call it Righteous Fury, not Force Rage, because yeah. I feel there is a okay. difference between that moment. Okay. Just, so, I know you know that, but I mean for people who are listening. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so yeah, his Righteous Fury to actually drive Vader back. When Luke was fighting Vader with being calm, cool, and collected, just trying to manipulate him, not overpower him, well, that's the point when he actually had some visible trouble contending. When he, like that, the bit but just before Luke does his little sequence of leaps up onto the overhead gantry, where Luke's just defending and Vader's just sweeping his lightsaber at him, look at Luke's face. He is struggling to deal exactly. with this. It's like Luke, baseline Luke with no enhancement, even with all of those advantages going for him, was still struggling to deal with Vader. Visibly struggling to hold him off. 
The only time he made any headway was when he was driven by his righteous fury, amping up his combat performance. And even then, it was against a weakened Vader. Vader was not on his A game in that fight. So, mm -hmm. you know. And exactly. Yet, you know, Luke won at the end because of all yeah. these factors, which is your point. Yeah. Exactly. All of these advantages stacked up and made and allowed a lesser combatant to defeat a greater one. And Crate, and exactly. are... and Crate yeah. isn't the master of anything he's good at. He's just an extremely highly skilled master at all of the things he's good at. You know, he's pretty much the best nine-man specialist Sith ever. Yeah. Going, yeah. going by not just his uh, abilities and <laughs> yeah. technical skill, but his mindset, his durability. You know, every the whole mindset of nine-man being balanced is everything. That he's basically the most powerfully balanced of all of them. So everything balanced, plus also being hugely powerful. Yeah. Well, on top of that. So end of the day, yeah, crate can contend and defeat Darth Sidious because he has so much going for us. So. Um, should we move it? So that's, that's Luke and Crate. That those are the two people who can definitively. Those are two people who definitively beat him in a one-on-one. -on -one. We already talked about Yoda. We already talked about Mace. I guess we should get into the people who could contend now. Yeah, cont well, before that, the people who are slightly able to, like um, Jaina Solo, for example. Oh yeah, for, yeah. Give oh, her I, ten I years. Get... Jaina Solo fell. Can contend with Sidious. People and that's another thing I hate because that. so many people underestimate Jaina. Ja Look, people, Jaina Solo Fell is one of the greatest Jedi just combatants, period. Just period. She is the Mace Windu of her era. Luke yes. Skywalker, who has no particular interest in combat outside of the how useful it is for helping people in terms of good, specifically creates a combat title, which has never been done to his knowledge, for Jaina, his family member. Specifically says that she's got to go through like a, a troubled life helping others because he recognizes her skill if he if she wasn't this legendary fighter he wouldn't have done that on top exactly. of everything we've seen of her actually you know feet wise performance yeah exactly like that's another thing too it's like you know um <clears throat> it's like i it's like i said in my um you know darth vader versus darth darth kytus video um darth kytus darth kytus isn't the better force wielder than Jaina solo fell not because of raw power, but because of variety and skill. Jaina still has a huge amount of raw force power. She just doesn't do very much with it because she's a dedicated martial artist and swordsman. And when she does, she's a bit blunt with it. But against Palpatine, exactly. you know, sloppy, again. Overwhelming power, sloppy duelist. Blunt is you know, the way to go when it comes to the force with him. And that's the thing. It's like, like um, Jaina was stated to have exactly the same level of raw force power as Darth Kytus, and Darth Kytus was stated to be more powerful than Darth Vader. Who was 75% of Sidious, supposedly. Um, yes. Yeah. So Word of pretty, God. Yeah. It's not... We, we take, take it, it, but it's still, value, it still but it's is a good way noting. to gauge things. Yeah, it's worth noting, if yeah. not completely accepting. Um, um, yes. We're not arguing that she would definitely win against Sidious. She put up a very good fight. But what we, said, what we said the other day was give her 10 years... Past the yeah. point where she's at, a, we, we see her at her best because that's not actually her prime. Uh, bear in mind. No, it that's, isn't. That's uh, another thing, people. She's thirty. You know, Kenobi reaches prime thirty-eight. Give her another ten years, she would definitely beat him. We believe. Yeah, I know. Jaina has the potential to per uh, surpass Sidious, undeniable. Again, you know, at her full potential, Sidious stand stands absolutely no chance. Same with Anakin Skywalker. Sidious even says it himself. You know, Anakin Skywalker will become more powerful than either of us. It is Anakin had the potential to surpass Sidious. He even says it himself. So that's another thing that's undeniable. I mean, Jaina could arguably be considered to have more combative potential than Luke. I mean, she's never going to be more powerful than him in a general sense, but combatively speaking, she has every edge. She has the enjoyment. She has the not only the potential power behind it, but she has the enjoyment. It's the Yoda versus Mace thing again. Yoda's more powerful yeah. than Mace, but doesn't have an interest in combat, so Mace's driving force behind that boosts his um, experience and skill because he's honing himself. Mm -hmm. And again, none of which Sidious has. He's not interested. He's yes. just pure power. So whenever he goes up against someone with power that cannot necessarily defeat but contend with him, that dueling thing becomes a problem. Which is Jaina. <laughs> yeah, which is Jaina. Yeah. I mean, she probably would lose the overwhelming power in the state we've seen her in. But again, 10 years yeah, is she, an example. Yeah, you know, like I said, she has raw force power, but force power, but she also has, you know, a very, you know, <clears throat> a very, um, what's the word? Um, I guess you could call it a very nuanced skill set in terms yeah. of lightsaber skills. She's able to cover all her bases. She's able. She's just an overall, you know, more well-rounded combatant. And that's why, you know, I think that Jaina could defeat Darth Vader, but Darth Kytus can't. You know, Darth Kytus is kind of like Plagueis. You know, he's, he's not really one for physical combat. He's more of a force wielder, and that's what, you know, that's a problem against someone like Vader in terms of... I'd, I'd, actually, I'd actually say Kytus is even worse off than Plagueis because... 
the whole impression I got from Kai just reading the book is that this is a guy who fancied himself as a great lightsaber master, as a great physical combatant, mm -hmm. even though, you know, it's like he's kind of a Darth Plagueis style diplomats Nyman specialist who thinks that he's right. Pixar Kun style warriors Nyman, even though he's not. It's uh, like all yeah. of all of his victories are due to desperation tactics. He never defeats someone purely just by being better or by pulling out an unexpected lightsaber skill that he's cultivated and built up like Exar Kun has. Everything he does is just like, oh, oh, I can't beat you in a sword. So in a lightsaber duel, so I'm just going to pick up that speeder over there and chuck it at you. Yeah, on, on top of that as well, in terms of the way they apply themselves, uh, Plagueis and Jaina are far more raw and not primal for Jaina's sake, but, um, you know, vicious and brutal warrior-esque fighters, um, which is what you need to contend with Vader. Not Because, yes, he has precision and refinement to the absolute degree, but his durability and general defensive um, skill means doing the Duke approach against Vader is very, very you know, dicey. He, If you mess up even slightly, he's going to get like a nick on his arm and you're going to be decapitated. Because he can take mm -hmm. the hits. If you're just going to be jabbing him, against normal people, yeah, it's great. <laughs> but if you jab Vader, it's not going to do anything. Anywhere. Even in his face, you could jab him, and he'd still come out of it probably better off than you. Um, mm -hmm. And Jaina and Plagueis aren't those kind of fighters, whereas yeah, Kaidus is the kind of person who'd be working around as opposed to breaking through. Yeah. And that's another thing, people. Yeah. Kaidus is another being who can contend with Sidious in terms of raw force power. Yeah. And Jaina yeah. defeats him. Yes, Jaina. Jaina won that. Another thing. Jaina won that fight, people. Jaina won that fight. She is definitively a better swordsman than her brother and won that fight because she could contend with him. Yeah, it's like the first time they fought, she cut off his arm. What does that tell you? <laughs> yep. And yes, yes, as we know about the whole Force Illusion thing with Luke Skywalker, but that was still Jaina fighting. And the thing is, against Luke Skywalker, Kai, if anything... Like, thinking he's fighting Luke Skywalker kind of made Kaidus even more dangerous because, A, he was fighting cautiously, and, B, you know, he wasn't showing much restraint because Luke was someone he was perfectly willing to kill. Whereas if he had been fighting against Jaina, he would have been both more reckless and, well, kind of half-assing it because he don't want to kill his own sister. Something that's clearly evident in both their duels. So, yeah. So that's another thing so, I just want to point out. So, yeah, um, the, force, the Force illusion, if anything, kind of worked in Kaidus's favor because it meant that he was willing to just he was both more go careful all, all and more willing to go all out so yeah, yeah. and that moves on um that also moves on to Plagueis Plagueis is another being who has force power that's contendable with Sidious's he's not yeah, as quite as a uh, he's even less involved in combat than Plague, uh, Sidious that probably holds him back a bit but still he's a contender you know irrefutable. exactly yeah. he's another contender uh what's who's another contender uh, Emperor Vitiate Yes. Emperor Vitiate yeah. is a clear contender. He has force powers easily on, you know, um, rivaling Sidious's. That is undeniable when you see the things that this guy does. Yeah. It's like the, the irony, though, is the fact that Paul Patine, <laughs> sloppy master that he is, is still a better swordsman than Vitiate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vish, Vitiate, is. Is Vitiate is essentially god mode Volfe Carco. He's a mm -hmm. competent swordsman, but he's mainly a force wielder, and he's just all—he's just got a huge hard on for the telepathy and light. Yeah, yeah. And and he's let's not be big honest, on the force people, augmentation uh, uh, as well, which is yeah. a big hamper. He's an—he's the uh, definition of an armchair arm general. Exactly. And yeah. Let's be honest, people. A, a, a pure fight between Sidious and Vitiate would be a pure force abilities, you know, duel. I don't even think the lightsabers would even be drawn. No, it would just be an ego fest. Like, ooh, you're powerful <laughs> emperor's <laughs> all, of, Sith of all time. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah, yeah it, Vitiate it, can contend. Yeah. So okay, yeah, and um, uh, who Darth else is Bane. There? Darth Bane. Bane. Yeah. yeah, Darth Bane. It's like Darth Bane is unquestionably a better sword, a better swordsman than Palpatine. Again, for the same reason stated, Palpatine's sloppy. Bane isn't. Bane is actually very meticulous as a swordsman. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Bane's powers are still advanced to the point where he can contend with Palpatine on that level. Not quite as able because. Bane's problem is that he uses the Force as even more of a blunt instrument than Palpatine does. Bane, it's like, when Bane has to kill you with the Force, it's all Force waves, storms of lightning, and that's it. He's not, you know, picking stuff up and throwing it at you. He's not trying to use the environment itself as a weapon against you. He's just trying to, you know, just slam into you like a bulldozer and sweep you aside, whereas... I'd say Palpatine, it's like the difference between them in terms of how they use their Force abilities is that Bane is a bulldozer... Palpatine is an actual tank. Yeah. 
Also, mm-hmm. unlike Jaina, who um, would have similar difficulties in terms of the Force abilities, he's going to be the type of person who would be more interested in actively engaging him as a Force user. If Silly starts switching to Force abilities, Bane is going to be more inclined to also switch to them. Whereas Jaina is going to be the type of, sort of person that just Force shields and keep the saber through, lights and then every, yeah. hacks him in half in the meantime, you know, which is what you need to do against Pe- Sidious because, hello, he's one of the most powerful Force users of all time. Um, easily more powerful than Bane. I mean, not like massively, but he is more powerful. So if they go just on force abilities alone, he will get the edge overall. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that in terms of raw power, it's like Bane would contend initially, but he'd eventually start wilting and being driven back. It'd be like that sort of a contest, the sort of a priori incantatum contest at the end yeah. of Harry Potter 7 Part 2 between Harry and Voldemort. It's like initially their powers are clashing and they're, and they're even, but grad gradually you know Paul Pateen's going to be Harry ironically and <laughs> Bane is going to be Voldemort it, it's that's like the his... only time you will ever hear Paul Pateen compared to Harry and not Voldemort probably yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first people yeah, you heard it here like... first you heard it here only <laughs> yeah pretty much that is the one situation where Paul Pateen is Harry Potter and, <laughs> yeah in that contest of power it's like event- it's like initially they'd be on equal terms but eventually you know Paul Pateen would start be get, start gaining ground, and Bane's powers and lightning would be pushed back, and eventually he'd just wither and fall, crumble away to dust. And because again, he's willing people, to engage him on that force, yeah, again, he contend. And but but because he's willing to engage on that force front um, rather than break through Palpatine before he gets his, you know, before he gets going, um, is why he'll lose because he'll engage him, and then he'll be on his back foot, and then what are you going to do? Just let go of your yeah. force abilities and charge through the frying lightning, or are you going <laughs> to charge through the frying lightning before it's got to the you know true dangerous levels? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'd say another individual who could probably contend with Paul Pateen, I don't think he would win, but he'd put, a good, put up a good fight, would be King Omen because of his masterful use of all of those Sith source, the combative Sith sorcery. He's attacking Paul Pateen on a level that Paul Pateen can deal with Sith sorcery. He's got the knowledge to do so, but he would have difficulty not his forte. Yeah, it's not something that he's going to be expecting. This one's like, a bit more circumstantial because, I mean, if they were in just a single room and then fight palpatine would win almost instantly because omen's dis- disability but right. in a big chamber room omen on the other side i can yeah. see where they're coming from i would actually think xr kun has a better chance than omen personally uh i don't think xr kun could take palpatine like obviously not because force abilities he could definitely you know contend with palpatine quite effectively because of the sorcery it's in the lightsaber combat because xr kun's style is too technical it's like mm. he can't deal with palpatine's you know sort of berserker offense. Palpatine would just slam into him and rip him apart. And Exar Kun, Exar Kun's approach to using the lightsaber is very Dooku-esque. He's very controlled. He's very technical, which is not the thing you want to be doing against a fighter like Palpatine because it's like you're trying to use precise techniques and calculated attacks and good mo- smart moves. This guy's just kind of slams right. into you, hits you with everything he's got, throws you off balance, rips you apart. Against Palpatine, mm-hmm. you have to be fast enough to meet him in, in speed, and also good enough to be able to keep that speed up without having to think, because you don't have time to think. No one does. Yeah. You have to yeah. be able and to the... hit, take that speed on instinct. Yes. Yeah, and the thing Speaking is, of... X, XR Kun can't do that, because Kun's, Kun is he's a lot like Dooku. He's a very technical fighter, who's all about making sure every single one of his moves is planted very, performed well, and performed intelligently he's not able to keep up that speed like the his double-bladed lightsaber and tricata techniques are clearly an attempt to, to compensate for this mm-hmm. it's like he's attacking so yeah all right so is well, there anyone else um, who can contend then? speaking of speed um i was gonna talk about vader oh <laughs> yeah yeah this i think vader, vader contending <laughs> with, with Palpatine. okay he in terms of raw swordsman swordsmanship vader oh, yeah, not that, unquestionable and in terms yeah. of raw power, he's, I would definitely argue he's contendable, like Dooku. He, yeah, it's the lightning thing that breaks it for mm. Vader. Like, he can deal with Paul Pateen's telekinesis, no problem, because his own telekinesis is easily comparable. It's the lightning that breaks it for Vader, and that's usually what breaks it for him when you compare him to a lot of the great mm. Sith Lords. Like, I'd say he has a chance of bringing him down, like, if he approached that fight super, super cautiously, like... This would basically be a repeat of the boss fight at the end of the Force Unleashed 2, only it ends with Palpatine killing Palpatine, with Vader killing Palpatine outright once he disarmed him. But, you know, the thing is, that's still an outcome that I don't see as being a major likelihood because Palpatine is just so 
fucking powerful. Again, he has a lot against him, but it's not an unseeable victory. Again, kind of like Dooku. He has a very believable chance. Yeah. At least more so, like, at least more so than most people. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, odds are against him, but he's not completely overmatched. He if has he it in, in him to defeat Palpatine. Yeah. Both literally and figuratively, because Palpatine, you know, his potential. If Vader's potential was not crippled, that is. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, anyone else there's also uh, Revan. Uh, nah. Like, he's too yeah. cerebral. He's not no, really up front he, in the fighting uh, with yeah. Force or. Um, yeah. We, we should talk about um, Kenobi, T, and Plo. Uh, well, that's the, the wrong category. Before anyone flips their lid, no, we're not saying that they could fight him. <laughs> we're just saying that. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on to that in a second because that was the duel. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I thought we were moving, sorry. No, sorry. No, we're still in the contending overall, comparatively speaking. Um, okay, okay. Um, we Vader. Um, I'm having trouble. There's someone else. We're missing someone. I know we are. Uh, I know. Uh, it's difficult to say. Not Hoth. He hasn't oh. the force power to take her. Yeah, Hoth doesn't have quite enough. Um, again, Dooku wouldn't, I mean, Kyle oh. Katarn wouldn't fare, wouldn't fare much better than Dooku. Was it Satil we mentioned? Because oh. her usual weakness is lightsaber combat, but obviously that doesn't factor in here. I mean, she yeah. has the raw elemental fury to definitely be a threat to him. That's unquestionable. Yeah, I don't think she'd ever win, but uh, she's definitely someone who can contend. She's got, she's got a lot of the same problems as Yoda. It's like her. It's like she's got. It's like the, one of the reasons why I think uh, Agen Kolar, Saisi Tin, and Kit Fist are the worst guys to pick for a fight with Palpatine is that their skill sets are their styles are built for offense. They're going to try and meet him head to head, which against a fighter that powerful is rampant stupidity. You leave yourself mm-hmm. too exposed. You'll get in one attack, but then it's like you'll just be ripped apart. It's like tr- it's the same idea as trying to engage Grievous. Attacking him is suicide because of the four lightsabers. Mm-hmm. So you need to counter, not attack. Exactly. Yeah. So it's think. like, I mean, I'd hmm. I'd say Satil Shan could definitely contend with Palpatine, but at the end of the day, she can't win because she can compete as a force wielder, no question. But ironically enough, it's the lightsaber thing because her hmm. defenses just aren't that good. She's she's very much. She's a lot like Kit Fisto in that she's best optimized for the battlefield. She charges into the massed groups of enemy and just, you know, carves a bloody murder canyon through them. <laughs> yeah. She's she, she's used to be yeah. the fastest thing in the room as well, which doesn't help. Exactly. She's not going to be faster than Sidious. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to. Is there anything else? Battle anybody else? I suppose you could. I suppose the argument could be made that Bastila Shan, at the height of her powers as a Jedi Master, we could, have no we idea. Know, yeah. We have no idea. I don't I'd see her having she, the umph either, even if she had the I don't power. see it. I don't see it personally either. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's kind of the same idea as, you know, Galen Merrick versus Yoda. I say that Galen Merrick has the ingredients to defeat Yoda. But he doesn't have the magnitude. Or Should we the talk about Galen Merrick, the whole Sidious thing? Because people are going to say, "Well, Galen Merrick's powerful enough to match Sidious." No, he's not. Yeah, it's no, not. People, no, even people even the know. biggest proponents of Galen Merrick, Connor and I disagree all the time on them on Galen Merrick and Starkiller, and we can agree that. But if they could agree on one thing, <laughs> that, that if was, we can agree on mechanic. one thing. <laughs> If we can agree on one thing, Palpatine threw the fucking fight because he just wanted to get Galen Merrick to fall to the dark side. It's like, if you go by how the fight's described in the novelization, it's not even a fight at all. Galen just throws a bit of debris at Palpatine while Palpatine's blasting Coda with lightning, and Palpatine just instantly falls down and is like, (laughs) okay, okay, you can... (laughs) Strike me down and fall yes, to the dark side. Exactly. And it's just like, <laughs> people, people. In terms of raw power, Galen Merrick's not isn't even as powerful as Vader, and Palpatine's. No. Yeah. Just well, the no. thing about Galen Merrick is he's not very powerful at all. It's it, it, as Connor says, all flash, no bang. It, he can create a big, pretty lightning storm, but he could fry very little with it. it yeah. Another yeah. thing, like the whole two to minutes thing with him blocking Palpatine's lightning, like you've mentioned in the past, a past Connor, he wasn't. He yes, he was deflecting it, but he wasn't redirecting it. Like Yoda could. Yeah. And again, it's a really yeah. unrealistic feat for him to be able to do. It was a case of the game kind of going, oh, we've the main character of the game, let's throw everything he can do at him. It, it, we have to, it's to some degree, accept it, and I agree with the way Connor does it, his mentality about the character, but um, it's it's a case of just taking the pill. You know, it's like, oh, okay, <clears throat> we'll swallow it, whatever. But it's not something that makes yeah. any sense in it's, any regard, his entire character. Yeah, really. it's, it's like I think something that's worth considering, even taking that, cu- that engagement of Force Lightning at face value, there was an explosion of Force energy, Palpatine came away alive, 
Galen Merrick did not. Yes. Yep. So just moving like, on from that one. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I, I thought we should just quickly address that because just to be safe. Yeah. Galen um, Merrick is nowhere oh. near the top echelon people think he is. Uh, no, he yeah. is. Yeah. Really. He's definitely formidable and is a threat to top echelon people and can win if he does everything right and they make one mistake. <laughs> but the thing is, almost every single fight he gets into, he's at a disadvantage. It's like his fight with Shock T. He, it's like that. <laughs> Which Galen loves. loves. <laughs> The victory he achieved was nothing less than a fluke. If you go by what the novelization described, she practically just handed him that victory out of pity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only <laughs> argument that makes sense. Yeah, just, and his victory yeah. over Vader was due was thanks to a lot of the exact same reasons as Luke's victory in Return of the Jedi. Mm. He had a bunch of little logistical advantages that all stacked up and made victory possible. But even then, it's like the novelization made clear that when the two of them engaged each other, Vader was still like, it's like Vader was hitting him hard enough that Galen was like shocked by the strength. It's like, oh my God. It's like he was it's <laughs> like bones vibrating. <laughs> like, I think it's worth noting that the Vader boss fight in at the end of the Force Unleashed one is easily the toughest fight in the whole game, even tougher than Palpatine. Vader is just that tough. It's like even taking the game at absolute face value. Vader is the hardest fight in the game, more Easily. so than the Emperor. Like, you know, yeah, and, it's and, like... And again, with everything you could take about it and all the different ideas you can learn, it, it's still a bit of pill to swallow. It's not some... He's not a character people should be holding up and saying, look, look, this is, you know, Star Wars powerful character and stuff. Like, no, it's ridiculous. Uh... It's like the most unlikely thing ever. And yes. He's, he's an impressive him. combatant in his own right, but he is not all that yeah the best he could be relied <laughs> yeah. yeah the best he could be relied to be as far as the great masters go is a threat that's really all he is i mean obviously if you were to put galen merrick against like luminara and Dooley, well of course <laughs> oh, yeah. he would win yeah. he's basically yeah. the ventress he's kind of the ventress uh sort of fighter um that's his yeah. level he can contend mm -hmm. with people better than him but ultimately he's just not really on the on the exactly in the league. so um yeah, just like I said, I just wanted to address that quickly. Well, yeah. in that case, I th I think someone has to do a Sag Ventress versus Galen Merrick then. Oh no, who will do we're that? We're like <laughs> Galen. <laughs> uh, yeah, Connor can have that have that one. <laughs> because I I will not. Uh, yeah, he hate. Well, yeah, Callan hates Galen Merrick, and I don't like a Sag Ventress, so it's kind of up to you there, mm. Connor. <laughs> um. What's that the Antoine's next video? We're getting into off topic, so I'll try and read us in again. Yes, as yes. much as it's a great Okay, topic. okay. Um, are there anyone else? Is there anyone else, rather? Sorry. Um, I mean, Nomi Sunrise is someone, but again, she's not a combative but Jedi. No. She's, yeah. like, she's like no. Luke without the combat. Yeah, Pretty much. it's like Nomi Sunrider is also she's better optimized for fights against the Sith sorcerers. It's mm. like you know she'd be she's well suited for an engagement with you know like talking at the height of her abilities. Yeah. Not at the time she actually confronted King Omen, no, but course. King Omen is the sort of com c opponent that she is best optimized to take down. Omen, Exar Kun, all of the ancient Sith lords like Naga Sadao or Ludo Crash, she could take down because she's got the powers. But the problem is, is that. She's so focused on those sort of dispel, those clerical abilities, you know, holy light, dispel evil, things like yeah. that. She's the anti basically. Yeah, Pretty much. it's like, but the problem is, is that this isn't enough to take down Palpatine because you need a solid grasp of the conventional abilities to bring down Palpatine. You need your TK defenses. You need your two to menace that deflect lightning. And yes, she's got two to menace, but she's not much for the telekinesis. It's like she's so focused on the mm -hmm. ethereal, esoteric aspect of the Force that her practical skills are passable, but not Yeah, exemplary. it's just logistics, really. Yeah. yeah, it's like she's she is kind of like what it, she's kind of like what if Yoda did nothing but study and practice arcane lore, and that was yeah. all she did. I just mm -hmm. thought it was worth mentioning because on that telepathic level and grand scale level, she can contend. But that's about it. Um, yeah. I, knew, yeah. I knew people would mention her because that, that she's one of the ones that's Yeah. Okay. Nomi, Sun, so... Nomi, Nomi Sunrider is... She is a Zana killer. Yeah. That's what she is. <laughs> she's not a Palpatine killer. Nope. No. All right. So should we move into the other one now? Yeah, I can't think of anyone else that can actually... I can't think of anyone else. Up, up, like... yeah. 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 But... I mean, I guess, which, I guess which, the argument... Which... Which is something that is in Palpatine's favor. The fact mm. that the number of people that we honestly believe could defeat him could still be tallied up with the fingers on one hand. Well, 
I think it's the fingers on both hands, but still, it yeah. could. It's still less than ten. It is a single-digit number. Like that's how powerful this guy is. Out of all of the billions of force wielders that have existed through all time, they're like. You know, seven people we we can think of who could actually people, bring him. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Just because there are people who can beat him doesn't diminish his character. In fact, it enhances yeah. his character because all of the stuff that leads to a disadvantage, uh, all the stuff that makes up makes up his disadvantage. You know what I mean? All of his bad yeah. stuff <laughs> comes as a from a creation of his character, the character we know and love. Well, yes. Love, yeah. You know, love then to hate. Uh, love, love, love to hate. hate. Love to hate. Yeah. Love he's to just, hate. Love to hate. Like um. The Robert Chicken Star Wars character, you know, that is the Emperor. Yes, in yes, time. yes. That is the character that makes up this. Yeah. So sh should we move on to the other thing Dervish. now, Sean? The other side of yes, the yeah. Yes, yeah. The, the other thing we want to talk about was um, who could contend with him if he had his power scaled down. Yeah. Um, well, another thing I want to do people. is sh we should definitely lay out like where we tier, you know, the council members in terms of overall skill that okay. we've talked about a lot because that's another thing people don't understand. So yeah, we should do that. guys, here's how we tier everybody. First, it goes in, in, terms, in, terms, in terms of overall combative ability, by the way. I think yeah, we, should, we should start from the very top with the tier one guys, work yeah. our way down. Oh, so okay. We, I, I, yeah. They, fit, they move up I'll, and down I'll, depending on how you judge okay. them, but overall the, combative ability, this is how we do it. At the very yeah. top, you have Mace Windu. Yeah. Mace yeah. Windu. Well, Mace Windu and Yoda as the absolute top tier yes. one guys. Like, mm -hmm. these are the guys at the very, very tip top. Like, this is the tier Paul Patin is in. He is tier one power. He is ridiculously powerful. Yes. And then... Below that is Dooku. Just marginally. Yeah. Bridging Dooku. the gap between yeah. him and tier two would be Dooku because of his... He's, his, he's, like, tier, he's like tier two and a half. Yeah, he ha he's on par as tier one, one in many eight. ways, but his disadvantage is being um, specific focus and lights up a style, uh, physical disadvantage, um, grand... Uh, oomph in the grand scheme of things, stamina, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what keeps him just below. Um, and underneath him is the tier two. You have yes. Plo Koon, Obi Wan Kenobi, and Shock T. The two closest match combatants of anybody in Star Wars, as far as we can tell. Three. Three. The three closest, sorry. The three closest yeah. <laughs> combatants in all of Star Wars, basically. No one will be I would close also, to those three. I would also put Anakin Skywalker in, the tier, in tier two in terms of skill and developed power yeah. he's overall he when he reaches his peak against dooku um i would put i would put first. angry skywalker on, on that on those levels not baseline a again though this is not judging just general skill this is overall combative ability anakin gets dropped down because of his tactical uh ridiculous exactly. his emotional instability his uh a general approach his anakin skywalker to use his for the force abilities you know that kind of thing. anakin anakin skywalker is a blunt instrument that's all there really is to it yeah yeah so it's pure so, skill he would be there like with dooku pure skill would be up with mace and yoda that kind of thing yeah he's, he's an anomaly in that way yeah so he's lower and, than and then below think he should be but that's only yeah, below analyzing overall combative power yeah yeah below shakti plo Koon, and obi-wan you know that that's where we're generally thinking kit fisto and anakin would be at least for me yeah, kit they, fisto for sure yeah. Kit, Fisto, Kit Fisto and Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, we, as well. we come, yeah, tier tier three. So Kit Fisto, Anakin Skywalker, Kiadi Mundi. I'd also put Saisi Teen and Aiken Kolar, and as well as Eth Koth in uh, tier three. And you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And I also I also think Qui Gon Jinn is in tier three, but towards the bottom of tier three. I agree. Yeah, basically bottom of tier three, upper echelons of tier two. Pretty much entirely down to his mentality and force abilities. His pure skill and lightsaber, yeah, he's definitely solidly tier three. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. definitely and then that one. Tier tier four is the point where you leave the council master purview and start talking about top level Jedi masters. Tier four is Luminara Unduli, Ram Koda, well, Baltar Swan, Adigalia, yeah. um, you know. Baltar Swan. We'll leave, that, we'll leave that aside for now. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, just, okay. yeah, yeah. We we Hurry have uh, and finish the damn video, yeah, man. I know, but she's under. We'll place her. Um, okay, but yeah, tier four is the top tier masters who are not up to the council master level. Right. So going by that, you know, Obi Wan Kenobi, Plo Koon, Shock T can all pose a very very real threat to Sidious. Yes, they can. And, yeah. I, and we will all say this: we've talked about this several times. If Mace Windu had brought Obi Wan Kenobi. Plo Koon and Shock T with him instead of Saisi Egan and Kit, Sidious would have been annihilated. Irrefutable. Yeah. Arguably, he would have, none of them would have died. He, yeah, he would arguably, have, none he, of them would have died. He would have leapt across the room and attacked them, and regardless of who he, he attacked, he would have gotten nowhere. Like, K Kenobi and Koon would have effectively stone... Kenobi and Koon would have effectively stonewalled his attack. 
Shock T just would have, you know, if given like way it. before it. You know, Meanwhile, she would have just gone. Mace Windu. You know. Mace Windu does his thing. I mean, effectively, Mace Windu could bring himself and any other person. Uh, and it yeah. Would mean Mace it Windu and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mace Windu and Plo Koon. Mace Windu and Shock T. You know. Yeah. They could all so, take him if they, if they buddied up like that. So, yeah. The three of them together, you know, Kuhn, T, and Kenobi, the three of them together, I think they could take down Paul Patin. They would just sustain casualties. Yeah. Most obvious being, most obvious being Kenobi because of his oh. uh, relatively lackluster TK defenses. And Kuhn because of his low durability and speed. Uh, I would say Kuhn was T more of the casualty than Kenobi, personally. Uh, I definitely yeah, I, think I T's the one. I, they'd both be blasted back, but... Kun Kenobi would take less damage because Kun's less yeah. durable. Yeah, um, I, I think the casualty would be Kun. I think Kenobi and T would come out, would be the ones to come out of it. But all three of them together, like if they triple teamed Sidious, they would win. It would just be a, it would be an uphill battle. It's, it's one of those things that isn't a given, but they could, the fact they could pull it off just proves our point about Sidious. They can, they could definitely pull it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the, that's the thing. Like, like um, it's another thing. Kind of addressed in the comments. Every combatant. Even the highest upper echelon, you know, Yoda, Luke, Mace, has a specific criteria that, if met, can result in their defeat. Of course, yeah. And Pal Palpatine's obviously no, no exception. Again, we talked about this. How do you defeat Palpatine? Well, physically, you outmatch him. Not very difficult to do. Old, old frail man. Better lightsaber technique. If you're a high-tier council master, you have a better, you know, technique than him. That's fine. Third thing, which is where things become unbalanced, is you have to contend with his power and the Force, and that's why it's unbalanced, because he's so freaking powerful, but there are people who can contend. Yeah, it comes down to whether or not his... First of all, they can match his speed. Kuhn would be at the most disadvantage here, because... Uh, um, well, Kuhn and Kenobi. Kenobi makes he's, up for it with his efficiency, but Kuhn is a step... He's just slow. Yeah. He can move that fast, but it's not his inclination, so he's a step down from the other. Kind of like Vader. Yeah, T's the best equipped to take Sirius in a one-on-one. -on -one. Never, she'd never win, but in the three, if those three were against him... T would take point because she can take the hits. She can deal the most, you know, blast casually deal the most damage with the horse um, and has the greatest speed. Uh, did I mention that twice? Yes. No, I said take the hits, didn't I? Anyway. Yeah, um, you said take the hits, but you said speed twice. Apologies, yeah. Uh, she's, yeah. She's got the speed, basically. And they can work around and take them out. Remember, these are all three the, of the best tactical geniuses in the order as well. Sidious is the sort of person who give, gives himself over to the force and cuts loose and has fun. He will underestimate these three. Mm -hmm. That's his, just net in his nature. Um, he will engage them uh, in pure open uh, fight, and then he will realize that, oh shit, I'm in trouble. And the question is whether or not he can then back up and blast them away of his for the force abilities. That I'm kind of like 50-50 on that one, despite how much I love those It's difficult, team. it's difficult, it's difficult, for sure. They are pretty much the best team of any three combatants as well. As we've said millions of times, yeah. they are the closest combination yeah. we can think of. But again, throw Mace Windu in there and it's no problem. Yeah, that's the point, yeah. Because right. Mace Windu alone can match him. Yeah. So and you can't, like, Sidious him. cannot take someone who is a direct equal with him in skill and also deal with three others who are near equal to him in skill. It, well, not skill, well, power, I yeah, should say. Yeah, overall combative ability, yeah. That's the yeah, 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 exactly. He just can't deal with that. And no our, one can deal with that. Yeah, and our point is take away his overall power. Like, even not even take it away completely. Bring it down to their level. Like, if you took his force abilities down to T, Plo, Kenobi level, he would be ripped to shreds by any one of them. If Obi-Wan Kenobi just woke up one morning and just had the power, like, a force power equal to Sidious's and confronted Sidious, Sidious would stand no chance. Yeah, and that's not no the point chance. that's hypothetical. Basically, we're, we're if, the if he is a terrible duelist. Oh, what? I just realized another person who could possibly contend with Paul Patine. We don't know enough about her capabilities, so obviously I can't really define how, but Master Fay. Uh, mm. Yeah. It's a bit ambiguous to judge her. Yeah. Really. yeah. It's like she's it's like her powers are very undefined. Someone as old as she is, I would like to imagine that she has that sort of yeah. development. Yeah. It's, but it's it's difficult. It's, yeah, it's like she is stated as being ludicrously powerful, but still, we don't know what the exact nature of her abilities are, because all we see her using are, are a few low-level telekinetic powers and telepathy to mind wipe Ventress. But, you know, it's like the still full impressive. extent... Yeah, the full... It's like she's basically Galadriel in The Hobbit <laughs> 3. It's like we know she's ludicrously powerful and she could probably go god mode if she wanted to, but the thing is it's getting her to the point where she would actually be willing to do that. Yeah, well, that, it's ambiguous. He, who knows? But again, <laughs> oh god, Paul Patine versus Galadriel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! That would well, be amazing. We'll, we'll talk about that. Maybe that's another video for another time. But um, <laughs> well, yeah, again, if if Obi Wan Kenobi, Plo Koon, and Shakti 
just woke up, all realized, hey, I have power equal to Sidious's now, except in the light side. I'm going to go confront him. He'd be dead. Because, mm-hmm. again, here's, here's the thing. Because, again, if you're able to contend with Sidious's force power, any, t- any mid-tier council master or higher, or higher can defeat him. And, again, in my view, the best example of this is um, Darth Sidious's bout with Luke Skywalker and- in Dark Empire. Let me explain. So in their initial duel, um, you know, what happened? You know, Sidious has his new body, he can, he, and he attacks Luke with his lightsaber combat. The comic notes that Sidious's raw power is what's off-balancing Luke. He just can't keep up with his speed. He can't keep up with his power, and he gets disarmed. You know, he's beaten. Later in the book, Leia comes by, helps, you know, redeem Luke Skywalker. A bit contrived, I know, but that's just how the book goes. Then she uses the Force Harmony ability to sync up with Luke's mind, and, you know, Luke Skywalker draws his blade and confronts Sidious again. And what happens? People, Luke made a fool of Sidious in that bout. A fool of Sidious. And that just proves right there. Guys, opinions? Yeah, pretty much. Amateur Force user Leia using not even full level battle meditation or battle mail, just Force Harmony, which isn't something that bolsters Luke so much. Yeah, as guys, Force Harmony isn't, isn't Palpatine's battle meditation. Aura. Yeah, it's kind of negates Palpatine's aura of fear um, and overwhelming oomph against Luke. It doesn't actually bolster Luke in that great, great deal, um, as far as we can tell. Uh, and Luke is not at his prime. This is not the Luke Skywalker oh. at this point. This is Luke... Dark Empire. Basically at uh, Dark Kennedy Empire and T Dark- level. Yeah, Dark yeah. Empire Luke is tier two. Yeah. Yeah. And he defeats Sidious in four panels, which is probably roughly equivalent to maybe a minute. Effortlessly. Yeah. He, I mean, I look he's at just that and swinging around. Seconds, and he, not, he doesn't just strikes. disarm Sidious. He chops his hand off, kicks him to the ground. Oh, show us, the, show us the panel. Show us Palpatine's expression when that happens. Yes. Oh, I, have, <laughs> I have a digital version. I'll have, I'll have it flash up on the screen. He oh, is yeah, he's humiliated. Like, and... That's he humiliates how him. And you can make the argument, well, Yoda is as powerful as he is, or close to. How come he didn't win? Big thing. One, Yoda's physique. That makes such a difference. Um, two, his overall this inclination to use combative abilities, force-wise, sorry. Um, granted, Kenobi and... Um, well, no, not Kokoon. Kenobi has that difficulty as well, but um, the... He is, he's willing to do it, just not as much. And the uh, with the force power behind him he probably would use it more but yeah yoda is not incl- inclined to use the abilities that would help him against palpatine against him and again the physique is such a huge thing it is a huge thing i mean I, like um operans is this right tier three uh kit fisto level as, as a duelist in terms of skill but arguably and even likely to defeat plo uh, kenobi and um coon in plo kenobi Combat. and uh, t in a uh, fight because he's uh, an orthodox physique it, it it does affect everything. We said overall combative ability specifically because they each have different advantages over one another, but mm-hmm. it will make a huge difference because the moves you can do are completely change, changed by your physique. Yoda is crippled yeah. as a duelist because he can't do pretty much any of the moves. He has to yeah. fling himself like a cannonball at his opponents because he can't reach them because he's too small. Exactly. He can't yeah, jab so like someone this, with a lunge, this, can he? It wouldn't even get yeah. like halfway to them. Yeah. yeah, physical advantage is the entire reason why Savage Opress is even remotely viable. He's strong enough to simply batter through his opponents. Regard- and it's like any opponent who tries to meet him head-to-head in terms of strength is guaranteed to die because they just can't handle that. It's like you see that in TCW. He's attacking Kenobi. Kenobi, the greatest defensive master in, in the Jedi Order, trying to block Savage Opress. Every single one of Sav- Savage's strikes is staggering him. But against someone who knows how to deal with that brute strength, Dooku and Maul being two great examples, he can't achieve anything. It's like the fight with Maul. What does Maul do? A whole bunch of sweeping sort of deflection parries that drive oppressive strikes down to the side, and then he just grabs his wrist, doesn't even, doesn't overpower him, just does a very subtle z- zero effort twist to just kind of, to just kind of attack the joint and, you know, and he puts Savage Opress on the ground. Zero effort. Zero physical effort. He, Darth Maul puts Savage Opress on the ground and nullifies his strength. But the thing is, the number of duelists who actually know how to handle that sort of strength, you know... Not very high. It's, yeah, because... Well, well, at least so least instinctively, people... not necessarily know how to in general. Like true, be, true, yeah. Kenobi, Kenobi yeah. is perfectly capable of using the Dooku kind of moves against that kind of opponent, and in fact does. But 
it's not his instinct. His direct instinct is to go, okay, that strike's coming in here, I will do this move. Because he's trained exactly. to the point where his defense is instinctive. It's like, it's a it's a weakness that is only a weakness in so much as the advantage yeah. is overwhelming. It's only again, a weak... it's going... Yeah, it's only a weakness in specific situations because, you know, it's like that's the whole thing that you get when you train your lightsaber technique up to the point where you're performing your moves instinctively. It is kind of a give and take. Yes, you're performing your moves instinctively and are therefore super unbelievably fast, but you're also following falling into predictable mm -hmm. patterns and doing the same moves again and again and again. Like that's why Venzalo has problems Lost as a analogous. swordsman. Yeah. And it takes yeah. visible effort to stop yourself from doing that instinctively. So, no, wait, that's the wrong move. Thinking, you know, you've got to think, okay, I'll do this. But, yeah. you know, if you're instinctively moving that, that fast, you can't really counter that very easily. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. reining, reining it back to the, you know, Luke's, Luke Sidious fight, you know, all Luke needed was the ability to match Palpatine's speed and power, and he made a complete fool of him because Sidious's technique is so, you know, haphazard. And bear in mind, people, this is Sidious at his peak. This is Sidious way more powerful than he was in Revenge of the Sith, and this is a Luke whose power is tier two council member, and he made a complete fool of him. And again, you can't make the battle meditation argument because Yoda, uh, not Yoda, Luke, bleh, fuck, Leia wasn't using battle meditation. She was using force harmony. And he still won. And yes, he's a Skywalker, so the rules are a bit different, but not overwhelmingly so to negate our point. Uh, especially no. not at that point in time, because he wasn't the Grand Master Skywalker at, the, at that point. No. It's, it's best ex one of the best examples right there. Uh, seriously, of Sidious's shortcomings. You cannot yeah. deny his, his fault in that. Uh, in that He was not able to, to meet Luke head to head. And again, point back to Kit Fisto, someone who should not have been able to even remotely challenge Palpatine, because A, he's not fast enough to match him completely, and B, his style is completely... Uh, pretty much unworkable yeah, no. against him and yet he still manages to block a few strikes Sidious was moving too fast for him and he still not specifically being good against this type of style managed to defend mm -hmm. what does that tell you that tells you that Sidious is sloppy very if, sloppy if all of the other evidence wasn't good enough yes yeah it's like Palpatine is a fighter who he's a lot like Yoda for anyone who's seen my Yoda breakdown it's like one of my final lines in it is that Yoda is a paradox overwhelming advantages and crippling weaknesses an unstoppable force who sweeps aside all opposition 999 times out of a thousand but against that one immovable object he is utterly impotent and we named a fair amount of that one percent earlier yeah small yeah. percent undeniably but it's still a percent that has an advantage thanks to it i mean if city's put just a modicum of effort when he had a free, the free time and the sparring partner to do so to get his self up to absolute mastery levels mm -hmm. you know this wouldn't be a problem but he just doesn't and, and uh, so for that reason he can't can compete with tier two and up council members that's another thing too people like to bring up the whole darth maul fight him doing as well against darth maul like aside from the force abilities things just in terms of raw skill Darth Maul is not tier two council master. No, he's, he's not. Tier three. Like he's... people, here's the thing to understand: in a straight one-on-one, -on -one, no holds bar duel to the death, Maul cannot defeat Kenobi. Maul cannot defeat Plo Koon. Maul cannot defeat Shock T. No chance. We know for no a fact chance. they can't. We know for a fact they can't defeat Kenobi in a straight. No holds barred fight. Why? We see this in TCW. Kenobi with two lightsabers takes on Maul and Opress at the same time and dominates them. Yes, he did have two blades, but the thing is, what you're forgetting is Kenobi was taking an offensive stance against two opponents using a fighting technique that he doesn't use normally, and he dominated! Yes. He's like, not an offensive duelist. He's using two blades, which he doesn't usually do. One of his closest, fam pretty much family members, because remember, she's effectively a surrogate mother yeah. of Qui-Gon's his father, just died, and he beat them. Yes, I mean, it was a tough himself. fight, because, you know, the two of them and their fierce fight are combatants, but in the grand scheme he of things, he easily defeated them. Yeah, that's the thing, too. It's like, like... And they ran from Konami. Yes. People ran. like to hold... People like to hold, you know, Darth Maul up on this pedestal. It's like, people, like, Jaina Solo... Is like Darth Maul is laughable compared to Jaina Solo. He is a joke compared to Darth Krayt and all these other people who could contend with him. But because oh look, he fought Sidious toe to toe. Look at him. Sidious is clearly trying. No, Sidious is trying more than zero. It doesn't mean he's trying much. He wasn't putting any effort into the fight beforehand. He was laughably toying with them. That's obvious. And at the end, he slightly ramped it up a bit to get it over with. It's like oh god, you're a nuisance now. 
put some effort in and just went and out overpowered him physically with the force granted but overpowered maul if maul was powerful enough to truly contend with him then his brute strength should have been his advantage not the thing that undid him and again with a butterfly block sidious (laughs) blades away picks up things against maul maul is not on his level i think it's also worth looking at the expressions on the face what does Palpatine look like when he's trying? While he's snarling and screaming, we see that in his fight with Yoda. He's like, yeah! <laughs> what's, what's, he, what's, he, what's he doing in his fight with Maul? There are a couple instances in that entire fight where his grin falters just a bit. Yeah, he's like, a couple it's instances more like nuisance. In that, yeah. A couple instances in that entire fight where his grin just faltered for just a second. And but what you see is when he did that butterfly block, what's his expression? Big manic shit eating grin. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a it's, it's not dropping the laugh because he's like, oh god, no, you're getting the edge. It's not shock. He's like, ugh. It's like I have to try, really. Like, yeah, exactly. That that is and people, in that fight. people. Yeah, and people. Maul is you know a better martial artist than Sidious. Again, oh, yeah. like we've explained, you know, force power is what carried him through, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. It's like Maul is a dedicated martial artist. He loves lightsaber combat. He loves training and practicing. It's like, you know, I think that's really telling, though. It's the fact that Sidious eventually dropped off on training with Maul while training him because Maul eventually switched over to combat droids. But how often did Maul do the training with the combat droids? All the fucking time! It was one of his favorite things to do! Day in, day out. In terms of pure lightsaber combat and martial prowess, um, he's very much on par with the people we've just said would would definitively defeat him. But the problem is we're saying overall combat ability. That means martial skill, ability and willingness to use the force, um, tactical prowess, uh, emotional stability, uh, physical edge. I find know, it, that, all of that just, regarding, like. just regarding talking about Maul for a second, I do find it interesting that... Maul, before his defeat in Episode 1, had half those advantages, whereas Maul in the Clone Wars had the other half of those advantages. Yes. It's like you said it's... before, he, he, cause I always found it really stupid and laughable, but you pointed out quite amazingly, that, well, not amazingly, you know, well, that uh, it was Obi-Wan that did that. Do you remember when you said that? It was Obi Wan. Who are you talking to, Callan? Connor, sorry, yeah. Connor. <laughs> I was pointing You're at Connor. Yeah. I was pointing Who, on the screen. You, you can't see you. that. Sorry, yeah. that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you mentioned that it was Obi Wan. You know, he was yeah. embarrassed, taking and an terrified offensive role. of Obi Wan. Yeah, it's like basically, it's like Darth Maul within the time frame of TCW was an emotionally unhinged basket case with some really deep seated emotional insecurities. <laughs> it's like every his whole need for revenge against Kenobi was motivated not by some desire to actually get even. It was motivated by insecurity. It's like this guy beat me yeah. <laughs> he beat me <laughs> that, that plus you know the 15 years of complete hell he went through yeah. the drug that's yeah. another cra- crazy thing though too even with all these disadvantages he still managed to actually make Sidious try it may not have been a very much trying but even after all that Sidious had to try Ugh, effort <laughs> yeah <laughs> But the yeah. fact that he couldn't just raffle stomp him with zero effort is also telling. Yes, of course. Yeah. In a certain sense. In a like, serious ability, if nothing else. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Paul Patine is a, is a ludicrously powerful Sith Lord, and he is quite skilled. There's no questioning that he, he is a lightsaber master, but he's one of the least of the great lightsaber masters because, well, he's just leaning on his force abilities to make up. And if mastering all seven forms is what makes you an, an unbeatable swordsman, then Sindral like, never should have lost to Anakin. A Nun Bandara never would have lost to Darth Maul. Yep. Bulk it's... against Voss. You know? Yeah. <laughs> this happens all the that time. Too. Uh, you yeah. can't just choose one specific trait and say, yes, that's why they win. No. Or for, no, it's like, yeah, it's days. like, it's like, you know, I will say that, you know, Paul, there is a certain amount of. Like, I do think that Palpatine's fighting style and technique is interesting. Like, I got my own theories about how he built up his own style. But the everything about him is just... He only has enough lightsaber skill to say that he is a lightsaber master in order to feed his own ego. Yeah. He's, not, he's not trying to be the greatest lightsaber master of all time. He's trying to say, I'm unbeatable. I cannot be defeated. But you don't... You need... The, yeah. Yeah. 
against yeah. against tier three, tier two, tier one, just being a master is not enough. And again, he has not kept that level. If he even if he became the greatest US of all time, that was like thirty years before he started needing it. it yeah, you need to practice. And he didn't at all. He, he his character it wouldn't make sense for his character to want to want to. He didn't have the opportunity in terms of time. He didn't have the sparring partners good enough to hone his abilities on that level. It's just not something that happened. So it's yeah, doesn't make sense. A part of his character, and I think we should escalate into another thing is uh, we should talk briefly mention kind of close thoughts with the whole three titans of the dark side thing we've we've all talked about oh yes oh, yes. yes i i discussed this idea and I basically love it. the three aspects of the dark side lining up with the DD alignment grid for lawful evil neutral evil chaotic evil you got darth crate for lawful evil he is order and control he is you know basically he wrestles with the dark side he takes this he, power and commands it yeah it's like you become an extension of my will i do not bow down to you i will make the un i will make the universe bow before me Palpatine is neutral evil. He is, I will do anything for power. I have no qualms, scruples, or standards. And then for chaotic evil, you got Darth Nihilus. Eat, 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 I eat, thought, eat. I thought you were going to say eat, Nihilus eat. is neutral and Palpatine is chaotic. Obviously. No, Nihilus no, is all Nihilus about... Is just, sorry. Nihilus is all about destruction and death purely for its own sake. He cares about nothing except satisfying his own hunger. He is, he's, he is, he's more amoral than Palpatine, though, I feel. I... This, Which is where the uh, he's from. he's a he's a force of chaos. He only cares. He's he is destruction force of nature. unleashed. He is nothing but death. Yeah. He and is, these three be and these three beings are again just aspects. The three you know biggest aspects of the dark side: control, you know, releasing, you know, order, chaos, all that. You know, um, control, they they personify it all. Yeah, control, power, destruction. Yep. Basically. It's interesting in you know, the application of the force builders as well, because as we said before, yeah. there are different kinds of force users. You've got people who control the force, use it as a tool, as a weapon. They tend to be the best in terms of practical, combative application. Then you've got the thinkers, the the ones that go with the flow, the people that let it flow through them. You know, they're the people who are, mm -hmm. are either really unlucky or really lucky when it comes to yeah. combative application. And uh, then you've got the people that kind of flip-flop between and just act, not chaotically, but... Uh, don't really have a handle on the force. They kind of just let loose. It is right. Anakin right. Sky. Right. Anakin Sky. Anakin, be the yeah. Example. He yeah. is such a bizarre force wielder because he really just jinxes back and forth between everything. He is not true neutral. He is not balance. He is, he is the an, he is anti true neutral. He is basically just flitting between all of the extremes. But whatever he's doing at any one moment is the focus of his entire universe. Whether that element is controlling things and making them bow to his will, or just giving himself over and becoming a force of nature. Why he's not in Plo Kenobi and T's league without, you know, when he's not at his peak, is because of his emotional instability, his tactical mm -hmm. uh, inapt ineptitude. Yeah. Well, Anakin Skywalker is kind of, like Anakin Skywalker is kind of a mixture of a whole bunch of contradicting elements. It's like he mm -hmm. got his, his his desire for order and control contrasted by his own tendencies towards recklessness and stupidity right bit of a bit of a nutcase really <laughs> and he is smart he is smart it's, he is it's just uh, it's like the kid thing, but without with less balance it's uh he he doesn't use them both together he won't act and think he will either think or he will act there's no blending mm -hmm. um which in combat yeah. is the worst way of fighting against yeah. the true masters anyway so yeah i guess final conclusions Palpatine yeah. is is unquestionably the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. He's an absolute power. He's a tank. He's a powerhouse. He's one of the big names. He's the first name you mention when you say Sith. But the thing is, our final point isn't that he's... Our, we're not saying that he's not the most powerful. There's no questioning that. We're saying that he's not invincible. He does yes. have very specific weaknesses. He does have shortcomings. And, you know, these are undeniable. These are demonstrated. We see this all the goddamn time. It's like the, a lot of instances where it's like he would not, if he truly were unbeatable in all areas, he would not have needed to drop his lightsaber against Yoda. Basically. Yep. Most powerful does not equate to most vi combatively viable. Yep. Which doesn't. And people seem to forget that. And I don't get Anakin that. Skywalker is the most powerful, character. but he's also an idiot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, and having I, shortcomings isn't isn't a bad thing, which is I think we've established. Yeah, Everybody so has shortcomings. Yeah. So long as they fit yeah. the character, it's just an ad, it's just a bonus. Yeah. 
and, it's just and part his, of who he is. And all of his disadvantages fit the character and make logical sense. So, so it's like, I don't know why anyone so yeah. refutes it. It's not like other characters. So yeah. yeah. Anywho, guys, this is seems like a good point to wrap things up because I yep. need to leave for work almost immediately. And so, okay. so, so yeah. yeah. Good timing. Let's, yeah. You know, this 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 was fun. Thanks for including mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys. This You're lagging out, friends. Originally just going. We got this before. Bro, we but can't hear you so well. But I got win. You, oh, uh, no, Connor, 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 Connor. Don't lag out in the last 10 seconds. <laughs> no. <laughs> this one we just going being ready and happen, but. Shit, 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 <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Oh. Okay, this is Jen's okay. Rice off. Okay. Hurry, hurry, we'll, hurry. We'll explain. Okay. See you later. Have fun at work. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Explain. See you later. Have, have a nice day. And we're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, Connor, Connor lagged out. Yeah, rather inconvenient the last m uh, minute. He said goodbye and bids you all a fond farewell. And signed yeah. off, naturally. Uh, what he was trying to explain is that uh, it, he wasn't originally going to be in this video. It was kind of just a suggestion from Evan and said, oh, do you want to do this discussion? Because I'm the person who records. I was the person who's going to be in it. Um, and then it, when we were just about to start recording, he popped up saying, oh, hey, you all right? I was like, oh, Connor's here. Why not invite <laughs> Connor? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it, was, it helped. Yeah, yeah, it definitely helped. Um, Unfortunately, Antoine wasn't available at the time, so it wasn't like yeah. a planned thing. So, yeah. Bad Hopefully, you guys enjoy regardless. Yes, uh, right, I think we've so... got a good discussion done. I mean, it was a bit iffy through most of it. Um, well, for the first uh, third, because we were very disorganized. But I think we got there in the end. We got the point across. I think certainly. we definitely made our point. Yeah, definitely got the point across. Moral of the story: Sidious is not invincible. Yes, and he has major flaws. And without his force power, or even with just give him average force power, and he'd be stomped by pretty much everyone. He's yep. not the master duelist that uh, people think he is. Yep. And I hope we've explained why we believe that. And yes. perhaps convinced a few of you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who just lash out and like, what the hell are you talking about? Why would you say this single sentence and not pay attention to the yeah, context probably. you said it in? But we can live yeah. in hope that there will be yes. calm and peace in the comment sections below. Please, please, please listen very please. carefully to what we're saying before you decide to make a comment. Please. Yeah, because we're not stupid. We know that Sidious will beat pretty much everybody. Um, yes. But... The examples we give are accurate as far as we're concerned. Yes. And that all we're asking is that you respect our opinions and hopefully enjoy it. Yes. That's all so. we could ask at the end of the day, really. Yes. <laughs> or not enjoy <laughs> it, you know, whichever. But oh, yeah. At least, well, enjoy the experience, if not the uh, result. Of course. Uh, <laughs> we're rambling at this point. So let's yes. sign off. Uh, all right. Ready for? Goodbye. Evanova95, we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later.